All right, we are going to start reading, and uh, we'll just read folks in. And here we are for our third round of this uh, live Bible reading marathon, and we'll go tonight as long as the Lord will allow us to. We already have hundreds of folks that have logged online and that are watching, and so just follow along. We're going to pick up where we left off yesterday in Deuteronomy chapter number 14. So we have made it about 150 some odd chapters into the Word of God in just two days. And so that's exciting. And so we're going to get as far as we possibly can uh, tonight. We're going to try to uh, be troopers and go from now until about midnight. And then we'll let you know about tomorrow's schedule leading up to church and preaching time. Amen. So Deuteronomy chapter 14 is where we'll pick up. Let's pray. And then, of course, uh, people that haven't caught Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and half of Deuteronomy can go back and watch and listen uh, a little bit later, but we're going to mash the gas. Father, bless the word of the Lord to our hearts. Thank you for the folks that are here tonight, those that will be here throughout the night, those that are watching online, and those that will watch later. Lord, I pray that you would just bless us. May the blessings of God just drip and flow down upon us tonight. Make the word of God easy to understand. Even the difficult historical parts, the names, all of that, Lord, just, just make it so applicable to our hearts and just give us a great time of unity together in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I'm going to get a sip of co coffee and we're going to jump into Deuteronomy chapter 14. All right. Here we go. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves or make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. These are the beasts which ye shall eat, the ox, the sheep, and the goat, the hart, and the roebuck, and the fallow deer, and the wild goat, and the pyrig, and the wild ox, and the uh, cam camaras. And every beast that parteth the hoof, and cleaveth the cleft into two claws, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that ye shall eat. Nevertheless, ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the cloven hoof as the camel and the hare and the coney, for they chew the cud but divide not the hoof. Therefore, they are unclean unto you. And the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud. It is unclean unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. These ye shall eat of of all that are in the waters. All that have fins and scales ye shall eat. And whatsoever hath not fins and scales, ye may not eat. It is unclean unto you. Of all clean birds ye shall eat. But these are they of which ye shall not eat, the eagle and the ossifrage and the offspray and the gleed and the kite and the vulture after his kind and every raven after his kind and the owl and the night hawk and the cuckow and the hawk after his kind, the little owl, the great owl, and the swan and the pelican and the gyre eagle and the cormorant and the stork and the heron after her, her kind and the lapwing and the bat." And every creeping thing that flieth is unclean unto you. They shall not be eaten of. But of all clean fowls ye may eat. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, that he may eat it, or thou mayest sell it unto an alien, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see thy kid in his mother's milk. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, that thy field bringeth forth year by year." And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of the corn, of the wine, of thine oil, and of the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if, he will be, and if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then thou shalt turn it into money, bind up the money in thine hand, and shalt go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen or for sheep, for wine, for strong drink, or whatsoever thy soul desireth. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice thou and all of thine household. And the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase in the same year, and shalt lay it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come, and shall eat and shall be satisfied, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand which thou doest. And at the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. And this is the manner of the release. 
Every creditor that lendeth aught unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother, because it is called the Lord's release. Of a foreigner thou mayest exact it again, but that which is in thine, thy, that thy brother is thine, and thy hand shall release. Save when there shall be no poor among you. For the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. For the Lord thy God blesseth thee as he promised thee. As thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. And thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thine heart, nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. But thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him, and shalt surely lend unto him sufficient for his need in that which he wanteth. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release, is at hand. And that I be evil against thy poor brother, and thou givest him naught. And he cry unto the Lord against thee, and it be a sin unto thee. Thou shalt surely give him, and thine heart shall not be grieved when thou givest it unto him, because that for this thing the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all of thy works, and in all that thou puttest thy hand unto. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to the poor, and to thy needy in the land. And if thy brother, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee, and serve thee for six years, then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee. And when thou sendest him out from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. Thou shalt furnish him liberally out of the flock, and out of the floor, and out of the winepress, of that wherewith the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, thou shalt give it unto him. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt." And that the Lord thy God redeemed thee, therefore I command thee this day to do this thing. And it shall be, if he say unto thee, that I will go not away from thee, because he loveth thee, and thine house, because he is well with thee. Then thou shalt take an awl, and thrust it through his ear unto the door, and he shall be thy servant forever. And also unto thy maidservant thou shalt do likewise. It shall not seem hard unto thee, when thou sendest him away free from thee. For he hath been worth a double hired servant to thee in serving thee for six years. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all that thou doest. And the firstling males that come out of the herd and out of the flock, thou shalt sanctify unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work with the firstling of thy bullock, nor shear the firstling of thy sheep. Thou shalt eat it before the Lord thy God year by year in the place which the Lord shall choose, thou and thy household. And if there be any blemish therein, and if it be lame or blind or have any ill blemish, thou shalt not sacrifice it unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt eat it within thy gates. The unclean and the clean person shall eat it alike as the roebuck and as the heart. Only thou shalt not eat the blood thereof. Thou shalt pour it upon the ground as water. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flocks and of the herd and in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coasts for seven days. Neither shall there anything of the flesh which thou sacrificed the first day at even, remain all night until the morning. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even, at the going down of the sun, at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. And thou shalt roast it and eat it in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto thy tents." Six days shalt thou eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work therein. Seven weeks shalt thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks for such a time as thou beginnest to put thy sickle to the corn. And thou shalt keep the feast of the weeks unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of a freewill offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son, and thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite that is within thy gates, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are among you, in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. 
And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do all of these statutes. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. After that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son, and thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are within thy gates. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all of thine increase and in all the works of thine hands. Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. Three times in a year shall all of thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. In the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all of thy gates, which the Lord thy God hath given thee throughout thy tribes. And they shall judge the people with just judgment. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. That which is altogether just shalt thou follow that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set up any image which the Lord thy God hateth. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is a blemish or any evil favoredness, for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. If there be found among you within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a man or a woman that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant, and hath gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded, and it be told thee, and that thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, if it be true, and the thing is certain, that such is an abomination wrought in Israel." Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which hath committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. And the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death. The hands of the witnesses shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the hands of all the people. So thou shalt put away evil from among you. If there arise a matter that is too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, then thou shalt arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judge, and that shall be in those days, and inquire. And they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. And thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall show thee. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee, according to the sentence of the law which they shall teach thee. And according to the judgment which they shall tell thee shalt thou do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they will show thee to the right hand nor to the left. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister before the Lord thy God or unto the judge, even that man shall die and shall not put, and thou shalt put away the evil from all of Israel. And all the people shall hear and fear and do not more presumptuously. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee and shalt possess it and shalt dwell therein and shalt say, I will set a king over me like as all the nations that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall as much as the Lord hath said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him. And he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God and to keep all the words of these laws and these statutes to do them. That his heart be not lifted up above his brethren and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left. To the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. The priests, the Levites, and all the tribe of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire and his inheritance. Therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren. The Lord is their inheritance, as he has said unto them. And this shall be the priest's due from the people, from them that offer a sacrifice, whether it be ox or sheep. And they shall give unto the priest the shoulder and the two cheeks and the maw. 
the first fruit also of thy corn and of thy wine and of thy oil and the first of the fleece of thy sheep thou shalt give unto him. For the Lord thy God hath chosen him out of all of thy tribes to stand to minister in the name of the Lord him and his sons forever. And if a Levite come from any of thy gates out of all of Israel where he sojourned and come with all the desire of his mind unto the place which the Lord shall choose, then he shall minister in the name of the Lord his God. And all of his brethren, the Levites do, which stand there before the Lord. And they shall have like portions to eat beside that which cometh to the sale of his patrimony. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observer of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. And I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. When the Lord thy God hath cut off the nations, whose land the Lord thy God giveth thee, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their cities and in their houses, thou shalt separate three cities for thee in the midst of thy land which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Thou shalt prepare thee away and divide the coasts of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to inherit into three parts, that every slayer may flee thither. And this is the case of the slayer which shall flee thither, that he may like, that he may live. Whoso killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he hated not in time past. And when a man goeth into the wood with his neighbor to hew wood, and his hand fetched a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slippeth from the helve, and lighteth upon his neighbor, that he die. He shall flee unto one of those cities, and he shall live. Lest the avenger of the blood pursue the slayer, while his heart is hot, and overtake him. Because the way is long, and slay him. Whereas he was not worthy of death, inasmuch as he hated him not in time past. Wherefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt separate three cities for thee. And if the Lord thy God enlarge thy coast as he has sworn unto thy fathers and give thee all the land which he promised to give unto thy fathers, if thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them, which I command thee this day, to love the Lord thy God and to walk ever in his ways, then thou shalt add three cities more for thee beside these three, that innocent blood be not shed in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and so blood be upon thee." But if any man hate his neighbor, and lie in wait for him, and rise up against him, and smite him mortally that he die, and fleeth into one of these cities, then the elders of the city shall send and fetch him thence, and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood, that he may die. Thine eye shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel, that it may go well with thee. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which the old times have been set in thine inheritance." which thou shalt inherit in the land the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition, 
And behold, if the witness be a false witness and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he thought to have done unto his brother. So shalt thou put the evil away from among you. And those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you. And thine eye shall not pity, but life shall go for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be, when ye are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto a battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. And the officers shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that hath built a new house and hath not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man dedicate it. And what man is he that hath planted a vineyard and hath not yet eaten of it? Let him also go and return into his house, lest he die in the battle and another man eat of it. And what man is there that hath betrothed the wife and have not taken her? Let him go and return into his house, lest he die in battle and another man take her. And the officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren's heart faint, as well as his faint. And it shall be, when the officers have made an end of speaking unto the people, that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people. When thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it, then proclaim peace unto it. And it shall be, if it make thee answer of peace, and open unto thee, then it shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee, and they shall serve thee. And if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. And when the Lord thy God hath delivered it into thine hands, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. But the women and the little ones and the cattle and all that is in the city, even all the spoil thereof, shalt thou take unto thyself. And thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far off from thee, which are not of the cities of these nations. But of the cities of these people, which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that they teach you not to do after all of their abominations which they have done unto their gods. So should ye sin against the Lord your God. When thou shalt besiege a city a long time in making war against it to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them. For thou mayest eat of them and shalt not cut them down. For the tree of the field is a man's life to employ them in the siege. Only the trees which thou knowest that, that they be not trees for meat, that thou must destroy and cut them down, and thou shalt build bulwarks against the city that maketh war against thee until it be subdued. If one be found slain in the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess, lying in a field, and it be not known who hath slain him, then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth, and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain. And it shall be that the city which is next unto the slain man, even the elders of that city, shall take an heifer which hath not been brought, wrought with, and which hath not drawn in the yoke. And the elders of that city shall bring down the heifer unto a rough valley which is neither eared nor sown, and shall strike off the heifer's neck there in that valley. And the priests, the sons of Levi, shall come near. For them the Lord thy God hath chosen to minister unto him and to bless in the name of the Lord. And by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried. And all the elders of that city that are next unto the slain man shall wash their hands over the heifer that is beheaded in the valley. And they shall answer and say, Our hands have not shed this blood, neither have our eyes seen it. Be merciful, O Lord, unto the people Israel, whom thou hast redeemed, and lay not innocent blood unto thy people of Israel's charge. And the blood shall be forgiven them. So shalt thou put away the guilt of innocent blood from among you when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies and the Lord thy God hath delivered them into thine hands and thou hast taken them captive and seest among the captives a beautiful woman and hast a desire unto her that thou wouldest have her to thy wife 
Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head and pare her nails, and she shall put on the raiment of her captivity from off of her, and shall remain in thine house, and bewail her father and her mother for a full month. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. And it shall be, if thou have no delight in her, then thou shalt let her go whithersoever she will, but thou shalt not sell her for at all for money. Thou shalt not make merchandise of her, because thou hast humbled her. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and in the firstborn son will be hers that was hated, then it shall be, when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath, for he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, he will not hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out of the elders of the city and under the gate of this place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put away evil from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be, to thee, and he be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him in the day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God. That the land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. And if thy brother be not, high unto, be not unto, nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, then thou shalt bring it unto thine own house, and it shall be with thee until thy brother seek after it, and thou shalt restore it to him again. In like manner thou shalt do with his ass, and so shalt thou do with his raiment. And with all lost things of thy brothers, which he has lost, and thou hast found, shalt thou do likewise, that thou mayest not hide thyself. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ass or his ox fall down by the way, and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up. Let the dam go, and take the young to thee, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days. When thou buildest a new house, then thou shalt make a battlement for thy roof, that thou bring not blood upon thy house, if any man fall from thence. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Thou shalt not plow with an axe and an ass together. Thou shalt not wear a garment of divers sorts as of woolen or of linen together. Thou shalt make three fringes upon the four quarters of thy vestures wherewith thou coverest thyself. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hateth her. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all of his days. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shalt thou put away evil from among you. If a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, then they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from Israel. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband, and a man find her in a city, and lie with her. Then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of the city, and ye shall stone them with stones, that they die. 
the damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife. So shalt thou put away evil from among you. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. If a man find the damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all of his days. A man shall not take his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirt. He that is wounded in the stones, or his private member cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when you came forth out of Egypt. And because they hired against thee Balaam, the son of Beor, of Pethor, of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam. But the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loves thee. Thou shalt not seek their peace nor their prosperity all the days forever. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. When the host goeth forth against thine enemies, then keep thee from, then keep thee from every wicked thing. If there be among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanness that chanceth him by night, then shall he go abroad out of the camp. He shall not come within the camp, but he shall be. When evening cometh on, he shall wash himself with water, and when the sun is down, he shall come into the camp again. Thou shalt have a place also without the camp, whither thou shalt go forth abroad. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, and it shall be when thou wilt ease thyself abroad, that thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back and cover that which cometh out from thee. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee, and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee, or turn away from thee. Thou shalt not deliver unto his master the servant which is escaped from his master unto thee. He shall dwell with thee, even among you, in that place which he shall choose in one of the gates, where it liketh him best. Thou shalt not oppress him. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore, or the price of a dog, into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both of these are an abomination unto the Lord thy God." Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother, usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to do in the land whithersoever thou goest to possess it. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it, for the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be a sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. That which is gone out of thy lips shall keep and perform, even a free will offering, according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. When thou comest into thy neighbor's vineyard, then thou mayest eat grapes till a fill at thine own pleasure, but thou shalt not put any in thy vessel. When thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor, then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and give it into her hand, and sendeth it out of his house, her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife, after that she is defiled, for that is an abomination before the Lord. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. When a man hath taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war, 
neither shall he be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home for one year, and shall cheer up his wife which he hath taken. No man shall take the nether or the upper millstone to pledge, for he taketh the man's life to pledge. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, and maketh merchandise of him, or selleth him, then that thief shall die, and thou shalt put away evil from among you. Take heed in the plague of leprosy, that thou observe diligently and do according to all that the priest, the Levite, shall teach you, as I commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. Remember what the Lord thy God did unto Miriam by the way, after that ye were come forth out of Egypt. When thou dost lend thy brother anything, thou shalt not go into his house to fetch his pledge. Thou shalt stand abroad, and the man to whom thou dost lend shall bring out the pledge unto thee. And if the man be poor, thou shalt not sleep with his pledge. If any case, thou shalt deliver him the pledge again when the sun goeth down, that he may sleep in his own raiment, and bless thee. And it shall be righteousness unto thee before the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of the strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. And his, at his day thou shalt give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor and setteth his heart upon it lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be a sin unto thee. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor of the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to pledge. But thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee thence. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. When thou beatest thine olive trees, thou shalt not go over the bows again. It shall be for thy stranger, the fatherless, and for the widow. When thou gatherest the grapes of the vineyard, thou shalt not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and for the widow. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command thee to do this thing. If there be a controversy between men, and they come into judgment, that the judges may judge them, that they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. And it shall be, if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face, according to his fault, by a certain number. Forty stripes he may give him, and not exceed, lest, if he should exceed, and beat him above these with many stripes, then the brother should seem vile unto thee. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. If brethren dwell together, and one of them die, and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her, and take her to him to wife, and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead. That is his name, be not, that his name be put not out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gates of the elders and say, My husband's brother <clears throat> refuseth to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak unto him. And if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face and shall answer and say, so shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. And his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him that hath his shoe loose. And that's rough right there. When men strive together one with another, and the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smiteth him, and putteth her hand, and taketh him by the secrets, then thou shalt cut off her hand. Thine eye shall not pity her. Thou shalt not have in thy bag divers weights, and a great and a small. Thou shalt not have in thy house divers measures, a great and a small. But thou shalt have a perfect and a just weight. A perfect and a just measure shalt thou have that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. For all that do such things and all that do unrighteously are an abomination unto the Lord. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when you were come forth out of Egypt, how he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee when thou wast faint and weary and he feared not God. Therefore it shall be. 
when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. All right, let me give you a drink of coffee here. Whew. Oh, I looked up and there's more people here. Hey, man, y'all made it. That's some wild stuff, y'all. That's some wild stuff. Oh, hallelujah. All right. Deuteronomy 26. And it shall be, when thou art come in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and possess it, and dwell therein, that thou shalt take of the first all of the fruit of the earth, which thou shalt bring of thy land, that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt put it in a basket, and shalt go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to the place his name there. And thou shalt go in unto the priest, that shall be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God that I am come unto the country which the Lord sware unto our fathers for to give it unto us. And the priest shall take the basket out of thine hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord thy God. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, A Syrian ready to perish was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a great nation, mighty and populous. And the Egyptians evil entreated us and inflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cried unto the Lord, the God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. And he hath brought us into this land and hath given us this land, even a land that flows with milk and honey. <clears throat> and now behold, I have bought the first fruit, brought the first fruits of the land which thou, O Lord, hast given me. And thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God and worship before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee. And thine house, thou and the Levi, and the stranger that is among you. When thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase the third year, which is the year of tithing, and hast given it unto the Levite, the strangers and the fatherless, the widow that they may eat within the gates and be filled. Then thou shalt say before the Lord thy God, I have brought away the hallowed things out of mine house and also have given them unto the Levite and unto the stranger, to the fatherless and to the widow, according to all the commandments which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten thereof in the morning, neither have I taken any aught any away aught thereof for any unclean use, nor given aught thereof for the dead. But I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God, and have done according to all that thou hast commanded me. Look down from thy holy habitation from heaven, and bless thy people Israel, and the land which thou hast given us, as thou swearest unto our fathers, a land that floweth with milk and honey. This day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all of thine heart and with all of thy soul. Thou hast avouched unto the Lord to be the, to this day thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people as he hath promised thee and thou shouldest keep all of his commandments and to make thee high above all the nations which he had made in praise and in name and in honor and that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy God as he hath spoken. And Moses with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. And it shall be on the day when thou shalt pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones and plaster, with, plaster them with plaster, and thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and with honey, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee. Therefore, it shall be when ye go over Jordan that ye shall set up these stones which I command you this day in Mount Ebal. And thou shalt plaster them with plaster, and there thou shalt build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones, and thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shalt, thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones, and thou shalt not offer burnt offerings thereof, unto the Lord thy God. And thou shalt offer peace offerings and shalt eat there and rejoice before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all of Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel, 
This day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. And Moses charged the people the same day, saying, These shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people. When ye are come over Jordan, Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Joseph, and Benjamin. And these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse, Reuben, Gad, and Asher, and Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall speak, and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and puttest it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed be he that setteth thy light by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that perverteth the judgment of the strangers, fatherless and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife, because he uncovereth his father's skirt, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his mother-in-law, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that smite his neighbor secretly, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that com confirmeth not all the words of the law to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen. And the next time we have a service, y'all better be shouting, Amen. That's what I know. That's in the Bible. Amen, Amen, Amen. Whole chapter on it. Amen. That's a test. Three of you passed it. Okay. 28. Woo, we're getting there. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the Lord, the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all of his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field, and blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and thy flocks of thy sheep. Blessed be the basket in thy store. Blessed shalt thou, thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep his commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all of his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all of these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and of the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shall be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. 
And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. The Lord shall make the rain of the land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. And thou shalt be removed into all kingdoms of the earth. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth. And no man shall fray from them. Or fray them away. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, and blindness, and astonishment of heart. And thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled forevermore, and no man shall save thee. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thou shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be quick, violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored unto thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto other people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot and to the top of thy head. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shalt gather but little in for the locust shall consume it. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them up. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all of thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive shall cast his fruit. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. All thy trees and the fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low." He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Moreover, all of these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things." Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person, the old, nor show favor to the young. He shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee corn, wine, or oil, or increase of thy kind or flocks of thy sheep until they have destroyed thee. And he shall besiege thee in all of thy gates until thy high and fence walls come down wherein thou trustest throughout all of thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all of thy gates throughout all of the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he hath nothing left him in the siege." And in the straightness wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in all of thy gates. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward her husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward the children which she shall bear. For she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and the straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates." If thou wilt not observe to do all of the words of the law that are written in this book, 
that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues, and of thy long continuance, and sore sickness of a long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, but because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall scatter thee among the people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there, shall, and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life." In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even. At even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning. For the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it again no more. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Wow. Whew. It makes sense in the New Testament when the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard, right? You live under the curse and the judgment of God, and it's not going to be easy. It's just going to be more and more difficult. That, that's a lot to, uh, to digest. Amen. These, 29, these are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. And Moses called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord did before our eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh and unto all of his servants and unto all of his land. The great temptations which thine eyes have seen, the signs and those great miracles. Yet the Lord hath not given you an heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. And I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxen old upon you and thy shoe is not waxen old upon thy foot. Ye have not eaten bread, neither have ye drunk wine or strong drink, that ye might know that I am the Lord your God. And when ye came unto this place, Sihon the king of Heshbon and Og the king of Bashan came out against us unto battle, and we smote them. And we took their land and gave it for an inheritance unto the Reubenites and the Gadites and to the half-tribe of Manasseh. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them, that ye may prosper in all that ye do. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and the stranger that is in thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water, that thou shouldest enter into the covenant with the Lord thy God, and into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God. And as he hath said unto thee, he hath sworn unto thy fathers to Jacob, uh, to, uh, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. For ye know how that we dwelt in the land of Egypt, and how we came through the nations which ye passed by. And ye have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. Lest there should be any among you, man or woman or family or tribe, whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God, to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it came to come to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace. Though I walk in the imagination of my heart to add drunkenness to thirst, the Lord will not spare him. But then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all of the tribes of Israel according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in the book of the law. So that the generation to come of your children 
shall rise up after you, and the strangers shall come from far lands. They shall say, when they see the plagues of that land and the sickness which the Lord hath laid upon it, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt, and burning that is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Even all nations shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto the land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Then men shall say, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For they went and they served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not and whom had not given unto them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is to this day. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may all do the words of this law. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, that thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all of thine heart and with all of thy soul." that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the uttermost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed, to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return, and obey the voice of the Lord, and do all of his commandments, which I command thee this day." And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all of thine heart and with all of thy soul. For this commandment, which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest may live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, if thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish." and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. And Moses went and spake all these words unto Israel. And he said unto them, I am 120 years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord has said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee. And he will destroy the nations from before thee. And thou shalt possess them. And Joshua... He shall go over before thee as the Lord hath said. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sihon and to Og, kings of the Amorites, and unto, them, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up from before your face, that ye may do unto them according to all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. 
For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all of Israel, Be strong and of a good courage. For thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give to them. And thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all of Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and the stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all of the words of this law, and that your children, which have not known anything, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as ye live in the land whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua. And present yourself in the tabernacle of the congregation that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud. And the pillar of a cloud stood on them and they shall be devoured. And many evils and troubles shall befall them. So that they will say in that day, are not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have wrought and that they are turned unto other gods. Now therefore, write ye this song for you, and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land, which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and wax and fat, then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant." And it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befallen them that this song shall testify against them as a witness for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seeds. For I know the imagination which they go about even now before I have brought them into the land which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it unto the children of Israel. Take note worship folks here we go. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge and said be strong and and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. And it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of the book in the law, uh, the law in the book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it inside the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be therefore a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death? Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in your ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves, and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days, because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of thy mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of the children. They are perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee thy elders and they will tell it thee. When the Most High divided of the nations their inheritance... When he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. 
He found in him a desert land, and in the waste, howling wilderness, he led them about. He instructed him to keep him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock. Butter of kine and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs and rams of the breeds of Bashan, and goats with the fat of the kidneys of the wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came up newly unto them, against whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provo provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in my anger, and shall burn into the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning heat, and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them, with the poison of serpents upon of the dust. The sword without, and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling and also the man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into the corners. I would make the, rem the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our, high, our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all of this. For they are a nation, void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they would understand this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall and clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Is not, the la is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. When he seeth that their power is gone. And that there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I will lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render, render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh. And that which the blood of the slain of the captains from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people. For he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all of the words of this song in the ears of the people. He and Oshia, the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all of Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into the mountain of Aram, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho, and behold, the land of Canaan, which I gave unto the children, give unto the children of Israel to possess for a possession, and die in the mount 
whither that thou goest up, and be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people, because ye trespassed against me, against the children of Israel, at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not, shalt not go thither unto the land which I give unto the children of Israel. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of his saints. From his right hand were a fiery law for them. Yea, he loved the people, and all his saints are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Every one shall receive of thy words. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Jeshurun. When the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together, let Reuben live and not die, and let not, let not his men be few. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and be thou in help to him for his enemies. And of Levi he said, Let thy thumb and thy urim be for thy holy one, whom thou didst prove at Massa, and with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Meribah, who said unto his father and to his mother, I have not seen him, neither did acknowledge his brethren, nor knew of his own children, for they have observed thy word and kept thy covenant. They shall teach Jacob thy judgments and Israel thy law. They shall put incense before thee and whole burnt sacrifice upon thine altar. Bless, Lord, his substance, and accept the work of his hands. Smite through the loins of them that rise against him, and of them that hate him, that they rise not again. And of Benjamin, he said, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all day long, and shall dwell between his shoulders. And of Joseph, he said, blessed of the Lord be his land for the precious things of heaven, for the dew, and for the deep that coucheth beneath and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things by the moon, and for the chief things of the ancient mountains, and for the precious things of the lasting hills, and for the precious things of the earth and the fullness thereof, and for the goodwill of him that dwelt in the bush. Let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph, and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns, which when they shall see, push the people together to the ends of the earth. And they are like ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. And of Zebulun he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in thy going out, and Issachar in thy tents. They shall call the people unto the mountain. There they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall suck of the abundance of the seas and of the treasures hid in the sand. And of Gad he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad, he that dwelleth as a lion, and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. And he provided the first part of himself, because there in a portion of the lawgiver was he seated. And he came with the heads of the people, he executed the justice of the Lord and his judgments with Israel. And of Dan he said, Dan is a lion's whelp, and he shall leap from Bashan. And of Naphtali he said, O Naphtali, satisfy with favor and full with the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. And of Asher he said, Let Asher be blessed with children, let him be acceptable to his brethren, and let him dip his foot in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy days, so shall thy strength be. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heaven shall drop down with dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab into the mountain of Nebo to the top of Pisgah that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan and all of Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh and all the land of Judah and unto the utmost sea and to the south and to the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees unto Zoar. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine own eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. <clears throat> and he buried him in a valley in the land 
<coughs> of Moab over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. And all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all of his servants and to all his land. And in all that mighty hand and in all of the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. Bam. That's good stuff, man. That's, whew. There's some powerful chapters there towards the end. Man. Hallelujah. Let's take about a five-minute break. Amen. And we'll go jump into Joshua. That's powerful. They still don't know where Moses is buried. How do you like that? That's pretty good. It's the only person in the whole Bible that ever got a eulogy and a funeral procession just from God. It's the only, it's the only, it's the only funeral God ever preached himself, right? He preached Moses' funeral and buried him. Nobody knows. Man, that's a special guy right there. Hallelujah. All right, let's break about five minutes, and uh, we'll be right back. So online crew, we're not going anywhere. Just stay there, and we'll be back in the book of Joshua.
All right, here we go. Might as well just keep on going. Joshua chapter 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all of this people, unto the land which I do give them, into the, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, to turn not from it in the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God give, has given you to possess it. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to the half-tribe of Anasi spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you, saying, the Lord your God hath given you rest and hath given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this, on this side of Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them. Unto the Lord have given your brethren rest, and until he have given you and all of those that have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it which Moses, the Lord's servant, gave you on this side, Jordan, toward the sun rising. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment and will not hearken unto thy words and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be thou strong and of a good courage." And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two spies, two, two, two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went, and they came into a harlot's house named Rahab, and they lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house. For they are come to search out all of the country. And the woman took the two men, hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them to the way of Jordan under the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up upon the roof and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt <clears throat> and what he did under the kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. <coughs> Excuse me. I feel like I swallowed a gnat or something. Amen. And our hearts uh, did melt. Uh, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house. <clears throat> I'm going to have to have some water. If somebody can get me some, please. <clears throat> Whew, thank you. Ah, there's one right there. Whew. 
Something got me. I don't know what it was. All right, what verse was I at? Uh, 12. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, <clears throat> since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that you will save alive my, mother, my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, Our life for yours. If ye utter not this our business, and it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest your pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there for three days, until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may ye go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all of thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his own head. And we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thine oath which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, According unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. And they went and came into the mountain and abode there for three days until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but they found them not. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun and told him all the things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all of the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. And Joshua rose up early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass, after three days, that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, when ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know that they which, that, 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 which way ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant, and they went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all of Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in the Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither. And hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Now therefore, take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe of man. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon and heap. And it came to pass, when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people, and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all of his banks all this time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city Adam, that is beside Zeratam. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe of man. 
And command ye them, saying, Take ye hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones. And ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared to the children of Israel out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that your children, when they ask in fathers their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan, as the Lord spake unto Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and they laid them down there. And Joshua set up the twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests which bear the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they were there unto this day. For the priests which bear the Ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people according to all that Moses commanded Joshua, and the people hasted and passed over. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over, that the Ark of the Lord passed over, and the priests in the presence of the people." And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel as Moses spake unto them. About 40,000 prepared for war passed over before the Lord unto battle to the plains of Jericho. On that day the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all of Israel and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. And the Lord spake unto Joshua saying, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony that they come up out of Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come ye up out of Jordan. And it came to pass, when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up to the dry land, that the waters of Jordan returned unto their place, and they flowed over all of his banks as they did before. And the Lord came up out of the Jordan, and the people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they encamped in Gilgal, in the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in times to come, saying, What mean these stones, that ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we were gone over. That all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that ye might fear the Lord your God forever. And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel. At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised. But all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, unto whom the Lord sware that he would not show them the land, which the Lord sware unto their fathers that he would give us, a land that floweth with milk and honey. And their children, whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised, for when they were uncircumcised, because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass, when they had done circumcising all the people, that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off of you, wherefore the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month at even in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the selfsame day. 
And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot. For the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do for six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord. And he said to the people, Pass on, and can pass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the Ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns, passed on before the Lord, and blew with the trumpets, and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men which went before the priest that blew with the trumpets, and the re-reward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day that I bid you to shout, then shall ye shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once, and they came to the camp and lodged in the camp." <coughs> Joshua rose up early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests, bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord, went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the re-reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose up early about the dawning of the day, and compass the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compass the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are within her in her house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And ye, in any wise, keep yourself from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman and young and old and ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she has as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein. Only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent out to spy Jericho. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. 
He shall lay the foundation thereof, and his firstborn and his youngest son shall he set the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth Aven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up. But let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but a few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shebron, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes. And fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord in the evening tide, he and all the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and disassembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies, until you take away the accursed thing from amongst you. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come by man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel." So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarhites, and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought in his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him. And tell me now what thou hast done, hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them, and I took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver is under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran under the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver was under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and they brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel. And they laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all of Israel went with him. They took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned him with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee and arise and go up to Ai. See, I have given it into the hand, it give, into the hand of the king of Ai and his people and his city and all his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and to her king as thou didst unto Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourselves. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. So Joshua arose 
and all the people of war to go up against Ai. And Joshua chose out 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. And he commanded them, saying, Behold, ye shall lie in wait against the city, even behind the city. Go not very far from the city, but be ye all ready. And I and all the people that are with me will approach unto the city, and it shall come to pass when they come out against us, as at the first, that we will flee from before them. For they will come out after us, till we have drawn them from the city. For they will say, They flee before us, as at the first. Therefore, we will flee before them. Then ye shall rise up from the ambush and seize upon the city. For the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. And it shall be, when ye have taken the city, that ye shall set the city on fire. According to the commandment of the Lord shall ye do. See, I have commanded you. Joshua therefore sent them forth, and they went to lie in ambush and abode between Bethel and Ai on the west side of Ai. But Joshua lodged that night among the people. And Joshua rose up early in the morning and numbered the people and went up, he and the elders of Israel, before the people of Ai. And all the people, even the people of war that were with him, went up and drew nigh and came before the city and pitched on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between them and Ai. And he took about 5,000 men, and he set them to lie in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the east side of the city. And when they had sent the people... Even all the host that was on the north of the city and their liars in wait on the west of the city, Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. And it came to pass when the king of Ai saw it that they hasted and rose up early and the men of the city went out against Israel to battle, he and all of his people, at a time appointed before the plain. But he wist not that there were liars in ambush against him behind the city. And Joshua and all Israel made as if they were beaten before them and they fled by the way of the wilderness. And all the people that were in Ai were called together to pursue after them, and they pursued after Joshua and were drawn away from the city. And there was not a man left in Ai or Bethel that went not out after Israel. And they left the city open and pursued after Israel. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Stretch out the spear that is in thy hand toward Ai, for I will give it into thine hand. And Joshua stretched out the spear that he had in his hand toward the city. And the ambush arose quickly out of their place, and they ran as soon as he had stretched out his hand. And they entered into the city, and they took it, and hasted and set the city on fire. And when the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven, and they had no power to flee this way or that way. And the people that fled to the wilderness turned back upon their pursuers. And when Joshua and all of Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city, and that the smoke of the city ascended, then they turned again and slew the men of Ai. And the other issued out of the city against them. So that they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side, and they smote them, so that they let none of them remain or escape. And the king of Ai they took alive, and they brought him to Joshua. And it came to pass, when Israel had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness, wherein they chased them, and when they were all fallen on the edge of the sword, until they were consumed, that all the Israelites returned unto Ai, and they smote it with the edge of the sword. And so it was that all that fell that day, both of men and women, were 12,000, even all the men of Ai. For Joshua drew not his hand back, wherewith he stretched out the spear, until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the cattle and the spoil of the city Israel took for a prey unto themselves, according to the word of the Lord which he commanded Joshua. And Joshua burnt Ai, and made it a heap forever, even a desolation unto this day. And the king of Ai, he hanged on a tree until eventide. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it at the entering end of the gate of the city and raise thereon a great heap of stones that remaineth unto this day. Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal. And as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, and as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man hath lift up any iron, and they offered their own burnt offerings unto the Lord, and they sacrificed peace offerings. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. And all Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side of the ark and on that side before the priests, the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well as the stranger and he that was born among them, half of them over against Mount Gerizim and half of them over against Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward, 
He read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel, with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were conversing among them. And it came to pass... When all the kings which were on this side, Jordan, in the hills and in the valleys and in the coasts of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite and the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, the Jebusite, heard thereof, that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, they did work wilily and went and made as it had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up, and old shoes, and they clouded them upon their feet and old garments upon them. And all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua under the camp at Gilgal and said unto him and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Peradventure you dwell among us, and how shall we make a league with you? And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are ye? And from whence come ye? And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come, because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard the fame of him, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, the Sahan king of Heshbon, and Og king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. Wherefore, our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants, therefore now make ye a league with us. This is our bread we took hot for our provision on a, out of our houses on the day that we came forth unto you. But now, behold, it is dry, and it is moldy. And these bottles of wine which were filled were new, and behold, they be rent. And these are garments, and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. And it came to pass at the end of three days, after they had made a league with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors and that they dwelt among them. And the children of Israel sojourned and came into their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon and Shepharah and Beeroth and kerjeth Jerem, And the children of Israel smote them not, because the princes of the congregation had sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. And all the congregation murmured against the princes. But all the princes said unto all the congregation, We have sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them. This we will do to them. We will even let them live, lest wrath be upon us, because of the oath which we swear unto them. And to the princes said unto them, Let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation as the princes had promised them. And Joshua called for them, and he spake unto them, saying, Wherefore have ye beguiled us, saying, We are very far from you when you dwell among us. Now therefore ye are cursed, and there shall none of you be freed from being bondmen and hewers of wood and drawers of water for the house of God. And they answered Joshua and said, Because it was certainly told thy servants, how that the Lord thy God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land before you. Therefore we were sore afraid our lives because of you and have done this thing. And now behold, we are in thine hand, and as it seemeth good and right unto thee, do unto us. And so he did unto them and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel that they slew them not. And Joshua made them that day hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord, even unto this day, in the place which he should. Amen. Let me get a drink of water. Who knew reading so much Bible you get chap lips, amen? Woo! Hallelujah. But we did just read that Joshua did the same thing that we're doing right now, right? To the children, the men, the women. Made them all just stand there and listen to it. So it's good for us, amen? Joshua chapter 10. Now it came to pass when Adozedak, 
king of Jerusalem had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, and that he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly, because Gibeon was a great city and was one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all the men thereof were mighty. Wherefore, Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Hoham, king of Hebron, and unto Piram, king of Jarmuth, and unto Japhia, king of Lachish, and unto Debir, king of Eklon, saying, Come up unto me, and help me, that we may smite Gibeon. For it hath made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up and all of their hosts and encamped before Gibeon and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp to Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Joshua therefore came up unto them suddenly, and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel, and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon, and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Horon, and smote them to Azekah unto Makedah. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died. And there were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, as he said in the sight of all of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and haste not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. And Joshua returned, and all of Israel with him unto the camp to Gilgal. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Makedah. And it was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hid in a cave at Makedah. And Joshua said, Roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave, and set men by for it to keep it. And stay, ye, and stay ye not, but pursue after your enemies, and smite the hindermost of them. Suffer them not to enter into the cities, for there the Lord your God hath delivered them into your hand. And it came to pass, when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a very great slaughter, till they were consumed, that the rest of them remained of them, they entered into fenced cities. And all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Makedah, and in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then said Joshua, Open the mouth of the cave, and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. And they did so. And they brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass, when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel, and said unto the captains of the men of war which went with them, Come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near, and they put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of a good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. And afterward Joshua smote them, and slew them, and hanged them on five trees. And they were hanging upon the trees until the evening. And it came to pass at the time of the going down of the sun that Joshua commanded, and they took them down off the trees and cast them into the cave wherein they had been hid and led great stones in the cave's mouth which remain unto this very day. And that day Joshua took Makedah and smote it with the edge of the sword. And the king thereof he utterly destroyed them and all the souls that were therein. He let none remain. And then he did it to the king of Makedah as he did unto the king of Jericho. Then Joshua passed from Makedah and all of Israel with him unto Libnah and fought against Libnah. And the Lord delivered it also, and the king thereof, into the hand of Israel. And he smote it with the edge of the sword. And all the souls that were therein, he let none remain in it. But he did unto the kings thereof, as he had done unto the king of Jericho. And Joshua passed from Libna, and all Israel with him, unto Lachish, and encamped against it, and fought against it. And the Lord delivered Lachish into the hand of Israel, which took it on the second day, and smote it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls that were therein, according to all that he had done to Libna. 
Then Horam, king of Gezer, came up to help Lachish, and Joshua smote him and his people until he had left him none remaining. And from Lachish, Joshua passed unto Eglon, and all Israel went with him. And they encamped against it and fought against it. And they took it on that day. And they smote it with the edge of the sword. And all the souls that were therein he utterly destroyed that day, according to all that he had done to Lachish. And Joshua went up from Eglon and all of Israel with him unto Hebron. And they fought against it. And they took it. And they smote it with the edge of the sword and the king thereof and all the cities thereof and all the souls that were therein. He left none remaining according to all that he had done to Eglon, but destroyed it utterly and all the souls that were therein. And Joshua returned, and all of Israel with him, to Debir, and they fought against it. And he took it, and the king thereof, and all the cities thereof. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and utterly destroyed all the souls that were therein. He left none remaining. And as he had done to Hebron, so he did to Debir, and to the king thereof, as he had done also to Libna, and also to her king. So Joshua smote all the country of the hills, and of the south, and of the vale, and of the springs, and all of their kings. He left none remaining, but utterly destroyed all that breathed, as the Lord God of Israel had commanded. And Joshua smote them from Kadesh Barnea, even unto Gaza, and all the country of Goshen, even unto Gibeon. And all these kings and their land did Joshua take at one time, because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. And Joshua returned, and all of Israel with him, unto the camp to Gilgal. And it came to pass, when Jabin, king of Hazor, had heard those things, that he sent to Jobab, king of Madon, and to the king of Shimron, and to the king of Ash Axfash. And the kings were on the north side of the mountains, and on the plains of Chinneroth, and in the valley, and in the borders of Dor the west. And to the Canaanite, and on the east, and on the west, and to the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Jebusite, in the mountains, and to the Hivite, under Hermon, and the land of Mizpah. And they went out, they and all their hosts with them, much people, even as the sand that is upon the seashore in multitude, with horses and chariots very many. And when all these kings were met together, they came and pitched together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them. For tomorrow about this time will I deliver them all slain before Israel. Thou shalt hold their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua came. And all the people of war with him against them by the waters of Merom suddenly, and they fell upon them. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who smote them and chased them unto great Zidon, unto Mishiraboth, Maim, and unto the valley of Mizpah eastward. And they smote them until they left them none remaining. And Joshua did unto them as the Lord bade him. He hoed down their horses and burnt their chariots with fire. And Joshua at that time turned back and took Hazor and smote the king thereof with the sword. For Hazor before times was the head of all of those kingdoms. And they smote all the souls that were therein with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying them. There was not any left to breathe. And he burned Hazor with fire. And all the cities of those kings and all the kings of them did Joshua take and smote them with the edge of the sword, and he utterly destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. But as for the cities that stood still in their strength, Israel burned none of them, save Hazor only, that did Joshua burn. And all the spoil of these cities and all the cattle the children of Israel took for a prey unto themselves, but every man they smote with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them, neither left they any to breathe. As the Lord commanded Moses, his servant, so, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord had commanded Moses. So Joshua took all that land, the hills, and all the south country, and all the land of Goshen, and all the valley, and the plain, and the mountain of Israel, and the valley of the same. Even from the Mount Halak that goeth up to Seir, even to Baalgad, in the valley of Lebanon, under Mount Hermon, and all of their kings he took, and he smote them, and he slew them. Joshua made a war long time with all those kings. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon, and all the other they took in battle. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts, that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly, and that they might have no favor, but that he might destroy them, as the Lord commanded Moses. And at that time came Joshua to cut off the Anakims from the mountains and from Hebron, from Deber and from Anab and from the mountains of Judah and from the mountains of Israel. Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. There was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel. Only in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod there remained. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said unto Moses. And Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel according to their divisions by their tribes and the land rested from war. Now these are the kings of the land, which the children of Israel smote, 
and possessed their land on the other side of Jordan toward the rising of the sun from the river Arnon unto Mount Hermon and all the plain of the east. Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon and ruled from Aor, which is upon the bank of the river Arnon, and from the middle of the river of the half of Gilead, even unto the river Jabok, which is the border of the children of Ammon, and from the plain of the sea of Chinneroth on the east, and under the sea of the plain, even the salt sea on the east way to Beth Jemash, and from the south under Ashtoth Pisgah, and the coast of Og, king of Bashan, which was on the remnant of the giants that dwelt at Ashtaroth and in Andrei, and reigned in Mount Hermon and in Salka and in all Bashan under the border of the Geshurites and the Machathites and half Gilead and to the border of Sahan, king of Heshbon. Them did Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the children of Israel smite. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave it for a possession unto the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh. And these are the kings of the country which Joshua and the children of Israel smote on this side Jordan on the west, from Belgad in the valley of Lebanon, even unto the Mount Halak that goeth up to Seir, which Joshua gave unto the tribes of Israel for a possession according to the divisions, in the mountains and in the valleys and in the plains and in the springs and in the wilderness and in the south country, the Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, the king of Jericho one, the king of Ai, which is beside Bethel one, the king of Jerusalem one, the king of Hebron one, the king of Jarmuth one, the king of Lachish one, the king of Eglon one, the king of Gezer one, the king of Debir one, the king of Geder one, the king of Horma one, the king of Arad one, the king of Libna one, the king of Adullam one, the king of Machadot one, the king of Bethel one, the king of Tapua one, the king of Hefir one, the king of Aphek one, the king of Lasharon one, the king of Madon one, the king of Hazer one, the king of Shimron Mirion one, the king of Ashkafash one, the king of Tanak one, the king of Megado one, the king of Kadesh one, the king of Jokanam of Carmel one, the king of Dor in the coast of Dor one, the king of all nations, the king of Gilgal one, the king of Terza one, all the kings thirty and one. Woo! God won! <laughs> Hallelujah! Man! <coughs> I'm a little tongue-tied. <coughs> We're getting there. Amen. Joshua 13. Now, Joshua was old. I bet he was. Woo! I bet he was after all of that. Now, Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. This is the land that yet remaineth all the borders of the Philistines and all of Gershurah. From Sihar, which is before Egypt, even unto the borders of Ekron northward, which is counted to the Canaanite, five lords of the Philistines, the Gazathites, the Ashtothites, the Eshkelonites, the Gittites, the Ekronites, and the Avites. And from the south, all the land of the Canaanites and of Meriah, that is beside the Sidonians, unto Aphek, to the borders of the Amorites. And the land of the Giblites, and all Lebanon. Toward the sun rising, from Baal Gad, under Mount Hermon, unto the entering of Hamath, and the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon unto Miserafath, Maine, and to the Sidonians. Them will I drive out from before the children of Israel, only divide thou it by lot unto the Israelites for an inheritance, as I have commanded thee. Now therefore divide this land for an inheritance unto the nine tribes and the half tribe of Manasseh with whom the Reubenites and the Gadites have received their inheritance, which Moses gave them beyond Jordan eastward. And as Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave them from Aor, that is upon the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the river, and all the plain of Medaba unto Debon, <coughs> and the cities of Sihon, king of the Amorites, which reign in Heshbon, unto the border of the children of Ammon, and Gilead, and the border of the Geshurites and the Machathites, and all the Mount Hormon, Hermon and all of Bashan unto Salka, and the kingdom of Og in Bashan, which reigned in Ashtaroth and in Edrei, who remained of the remnant of the giants. For these did Moses smite and cast them out. Nevertheless, the children of Israel expelled not the Gershurites, nor the Machathites, nor the Gershurites, or and the Machathites dwell among Israel unto this day. Only unto the tribe of Levi he gave none inheritance. The sacrifices of the Lord God of Israel made by fire are their inheritance, as he said unto them. And Moses gave unto the tribe of the children of Reuben inheritance according to their families. And their coast was from Arior, that is on the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the river, and all the plain of Medaba. Whew, I need a drink of water. My voice is getting wrong.
Verse 17, Heshbon and all her cities that are in the plain, Dehan and Baalmoth, Baal and Beth, Belmion and uh, Jezahaz and Kermoth and Medapah and Kerjerathim and Sibna and Zareth Shear in the Mount of the Valley. And Beth Peor and Ashdoth Pisgah and Beth Jamash and all the cities of the plain and all the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, which reigned in Heshbon, whom Moses smote with the princes of Midian, Evi, and Rechem, and Zur, and Hur, and Reba, were the dukes of Sihon dwelling in the country. <clears throat> Balaam also, the son of Beor, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel slay with the sword among them that were slain by them. And the border of the children of the Reubens was Jordan. And the border thereof, <clears throat> this was the inheritance of the children of Reuben after their families, the cities, and the villages thereof. Somebody is going to have to take over in chapter 14 here in just a second. All right. And Moses gave inheritance unto the tribe of Gad, even unto the children of Gad, according to their families. And their coast was Jazer and all the cities of Gilead and half the land of the children of Ammon unto Arior, and which is before Rabbah and from Heshbon unto Ramoth Mizpah and Betonim. And from Manaheim unto the border of Debir. And in the valley, Beth Haram and Beth Nimrah and Succoth and Zaphon and the rest of the kingdom of Sihon, king of Heshbon. <clears throat> Jordan and his border, even unto the edge of the sea of Chinnereth on the other side of Jordan eastward. This is the inheritance of the children of Gad after their families, the cities, and their villages. And Moses gave inheritance unto the half tribe of Manasseh, and this was the possession of the half tribe of the children of Manasseh by their families. And their coast was from Menahim and all of Bashan and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, and all the towers of Jer, towns of Jer, which are in Bashan, threescore cities. And half of Gilead and Ashtaroth and Idri, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan, were pertaining unto the children of Machor, the son of Manasseh, even unto the one half of the children of Machor by their families. These are the countries which Moses did distribute to the inheritance in the plains of Moab on the other side, Jordan, but Jericho eastward. But under the tribe of Levi, Moses gave not any inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance, as he said unto them. Whew, somebody's going to have to read. You want to read a little bit, babe? Unless you want me to get one of the guys to. You want to read a little bit? <laughs> you want this big one? All right. I got to get me a little, a little cough drop, a little bit of water. <clears throat> get a little, a little dry. It's all you, my brother. And these are the countries which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel, distributed for inheritance to them. By lot was their inheritance, as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses, for the nine tribes and for the half tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of two tribes and a half tribe on the other side, Jordan. But unto the Levites he gave none inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. Therefore they gave no part unto the Levites in the land, save cities to dwell in with their suburbs for their cattle and for their sustenance. Substance, As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and he's buried with the words, and I promise, so I'll do the best I can. The Kenizzite said unto them, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee, and Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to Espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet had trodden shall be thine inheritance and, my, and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest in that day how the Anakins were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so, be the Lord will be with me. 
Then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed them, and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron before was Kerjah Barba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims. And the land had rest from war. Joshua chapter 15. This then was the lot of the tribe of the children of Judah by their families, even to the border of Edom, the wilderness of Zin, southward was the uttermost part of the south coast. And their south border was from the, so from the shore of the salt sea, from the bay that looketh southward. And it went out to the south side to Mela Akrabim, and passed along to Zin, and ascended up on the south side unto Kadesh Barnea, and passed along to Hezron, and went up to Adar, and fetched a compass to Karka. From thence it passed towards Asmon, and went out unto the river of Egypt, and the goings out of the coast were at the sea. This shall be your south coast. And the east border was the salt sea, even unto the end of Jordan. And their border in the north quarter was from the bay of the sea at the uttermost part of Jordan. And the border went up to Beth Hogla and passed along by the north of Beth Arabah. And the border went up to the stone of Bahan, the son of Reuben. And the border went up toward Debir from the valley of Achor. And so northward, looking toward Gilgal, that is before the going up to Adamum, which is on the south side of the river. And the border passed toward the waters of in Shemesh, and the goings out thereof were in Rungal. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnon and to the south side of the Jebusite, the same as Jerusalem. And the border went up to the top of the mountain that lieth before the valley of Hinnon westward, which is at the end of the valley of the giants northward. And the border was drawn from the top of the hill unto the fountain of the water of Nephtheth, and went out to the cities of Mount Ephron. And the border was drawn to Bala, which is Kerjoth Jerem. And the border compassed from Bala westward unto Mount Seir, and passed along unto the side of Mount Jerem, which is Cheselon, on the north side, and went down to Beth Shemesh, and passed on to Timnah. And the border went out to the side of Ekron northward, and the border was drawn to Shakran, and passed along to Mount Bala, and went out unto Jemnil, and the goings out of the border were at the sea. And the west border was to the great sea, and the coast thereof. This is the coast of the children of Judah, round about according to their families. And unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh, he gave, he gave a part among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, even the city of Arba, the father of Anak, which city is Hebron. And Caleb drove thence the three sons of Anak, Shishai, and Ammonon, and Talmai, the children of Anak. And he went up thence to the inhabitants of Debir, and the name of Debir before was Kerjoth Sefer. And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kerjoth Sefer and taketh it to him, I will give Ashash, the da my daughter, to wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it, and he gave, it, he, and he gave him Ashkash, his daughter, to wife. And it came to pass, as she came upon him unto him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field, and she lighted off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wouldest thou? Who answered, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a southland, given me also springs of water, and he gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families. And the uttermost cities of the tribe of the children of Judah toward the coast of Edom southward were Kabzil and Adair and Jagur and Kenah, and Dimonah, and Adadai, and Kadesh, and Hazor, and Ethnam, Ziph, and Telem, and Beloth, and Hazor, and Hadadath, and Karath, and Hezron, which is Hazor, Ammon, and Shema, and Moladah, and Hazor Gadah, and Heshman, and Beth Pelet, and Hazar Shinal, and, and Beersheba, and Bishjathah, Bela, and Iam, and Azim, and Eltalad, and Chazil, and Horma, and Ziklag, Ziklag, and Madama, and Sansana, and Labaoth, and Shalem, and Ayan, and 
Rimon, all the cities, are 20 and 9 with their villages. And in the valley, Eshtal, and Zorah, and Ashna, and Zana, and Inganan, Tapa, and Enon, Jarmuth, and Adalam, Soka, and Azakah. Thanks, pastors. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, let's roll on. This is uh, cha Joshua 15, chapter, uh, chapter 15, verse 34. And Zenoah, and Iganim, Tapa, and Enon, Jarmuth, and Adalam, Saka, and Azekah, and Sharam, and Adathaim, and Gedorah, and Gedorothiam, the 14 cities with their villages. Zenim, and Hadashah, and Mikkel. Medal God and Delene and Mispeth and Jothel, Lachish and Bozak, Boz, Bozkoth and Eglon and Kaban and Laman and Kilish and Gedaroth, Beth Dagon and Namath and Makadah, 16 cities with their villages, Libna and Ether and Ashen and Jifta and Ashna and Nazib. And Kela and Akzib and Marasha, nine cities with their villages. Ekron with her towns and her villages, from Ekron even unto the sea, all that lay near Ashdod with her villages, Ashdod with their towns and her villages, Gaza with her towns and her villages, unto the river of Egypt and the great sea and the border thereof. And in the mountains, Shemir and Jatir and Sokal and Dana. And Kurjas Sana, which is in which is Debir, and Ana, and Anab, and Eshterma, and Anam, and Goshen, and Holon, and Gilah, eleven cities with their villages, Arab, and Duma, and Eshain, and Janum, and Beth Tapa, and Afaka, and Humta, and Kurjatharba, which is Hebron, and Zior, nine cities with their villages, Maon, Carmel, and Ziph, and Jatah, and Jezreel, and Jotdiam, and Z Zenoah, Cain, Gilbeth, and Tamah, ten cities with their villages, Hahol, Beth Zor, and Gedor, and Marath, and Bethanoth, and Eltakan, six cities with their villages, Kurjath Baal, which is Kurjath Jerim, and Rabbah, two cities with their villages, in the wilderness, Beth Urbah, Midden and Sakaka, and Nibshan in the city of Salt, and Injadi, six cities with their villages. As for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the children of Judah could not drive them out, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Judah at Jerusalem until this day. Joshua chapter 16. And a lot of the children of Joseph fell from Jordan by Jericho unto the waters of Jericho on the east, to the wilderness that goeth up from Jericho throughout Mount Bethel, and goeth out from Bethel to Luz, and pass along unto the borders of Archi, Adaroth, to Adaroth, and goeth down westward to the coast of Japheth, unto the coast of Betharon, the nether, and to Gezer, and the goings out therefore are at the sea. So the children of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim, took their inheritance, and the border of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, was thus. Even the border of their inheritance on the east side was Adarothadar unto Beth Haran, the upper. And the border went out toward the sea to Meshmethoth on the north side. And the border went out eastward unto Tanith Shiloh and passed by it on the east to Janaha. And it went down from Janaha to Ataroth and to Naroth and came to Jericho and went out to Jordan. The border went out from Tapa westward unto the river Cana, and the goings out therefore thereof were at the sea. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Ephraim by their families. And the separate cities for the children of Ephraim were among the inheritance of the children of Manasseh, all the cities with their villages. And they drave not out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwell among the Ephraimites unto this day and serve under tribute. Chapter 17. There was also a lot of the tribe of there was also a lot for the tribe of Manasseh, for he was the firstborn of Joseph, to wit, for Machir, the firstborn of Manasseh, the father of Gilead, because he was a man of war. Therefore he had Gilead and Basham. 
There was also a lot for the rest of the children of Manasseh by their families, for the children of Abizar, and for the children of Halak, and for the children of Azrael, and for the children of Shechem, and for the children of Hefer, and for the children of Shemida. These were the male children of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, by their families. But Zelophehad, the son of Hepler, the son of uh, Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, had no sons but daughters, and these are the names of his daughters, Mela and Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Terza. And they came near before Eleazar the priest, and before Joshua the son of Nun, and before the princes, saying, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brethren. Therefore, according to the commandment of the Lord, he gave them an inheritance among the brethren of their father. And there fell ten portions of Manasseh beside the land of Gilead and Bashan, which were on the other side of Jordan. Because the daughters of Manasseh had an inheritance among his sons, and the rest of Manasseh's sons had the land of Gilead. And the coast of Manasseh was from Asher to Mishmelotah, that lieth before Shechem. And the border went along on the right hand unto the inhabitants of Entapaha. Now Manasseh had the land of Tapah, but Tapah on the border of Manasseh belonged to the children of Ephraim. Excuse me. All right. Chapter 17, verse 9. And the coast ascended unto the river Canoth, southward of the river. These cities of Ephraim are among the cities of Manasseh. The coast of Manasseh also was on the north side of the river, and the outgoings of it were at the sea. Southward it was Ephraim's, and northward it was Manasseh. Manasseh's, and the sea is his border. And they met together in Asher on the north, and in Issachar on the east. And Manasseh had an Issachar and in Asher, Beshane and her towns, and Iblim and her towns, and the inhabitants of Dor and her towns, and the inhabitants of Endor and her towns, and the inhabitants of Tanach and her towns, and the inhabitants of Megiddo and her towns, even three countries. Yet the children of Manasseh could not drive out the inhabitants of those cities, but the Canaanites would dwell in that land. Yet it came to pass when the children of Israel were children of Israel were waxen strong that they put the Canaanites to tribute but did not utterly drive them out and the children of Joseph spake unto Joshua saying why hast thou given me but one lot and one portion to inherit seeing I am a great people for as much as the Lord had blessed me hitherto and Joshua answered them if thou be a great people then get thee up to the wood country and cut down for thyself there in the land of the Perizzites and of the giants if Mount Ephraim be too narrow for thee. And the children of Joseph said, This hill is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites that dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron, iron, both they who are of Bashan and her towns, and they who are of the valley of Jezreel. And Joshua spake unto the house of Joseph, even to Ephraim and to Manasseh, saying, Thou art a great people, and hast great power. Thou shalt not have... Thou shalt not have one lot only. But the mountain shall be thine, for it is a wood, and thou shalt cut it down, and the outgoings of it shall be thine. For thou shalt drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots, and though they be strong. You feel better? All right. Wow. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you, brother. Damn. Give him a hand. I gave him one of the hardest chapters. <laughs> Didn't mean to. Great job, brother. Thank you for that. And uh, I'll stick one of these in my mouth while I'm going. We're about to get through Joshua. We got quite a few more uh, more names. See how the Lord did that? Had me all raspy just to test you real good to see how you was going to do. And you passed the test with, uh, with flying colors. Amen? Great job, brother. 18, right? <clears throat> and the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of the congregation there, and the land was subdued before them. And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not received their inheritance. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, How long are ye slack to go to possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers hath given you? Give you out of among you three men for each tribe, and I will send them, and they shall rise and go through the land and describe it according to the inheritance of them, and they shall come again to me. And they shall divide it into seven parts. Judah shall abide in their coast on the south, and the house of Joseph shall abide in their coasts on the north. Ye shall therefore describe the land into seven parts and bring the description hither to me that I may cast lots for you here before the Lord our God. 
but the Levites have no part among you. For the priesthood of the Lord is their inheritance, and Gad and Reuben and the half-tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance beyond Jordan on the east, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave them. And the men arose and went away. And Joshua charged them that went to describe the land, saying, Go and walk through the land and describe it, and come again to me, that I may be here cast lots before you before the Lord in Shiloh. And the men went and passed through the land and described it by their cities in seven parts in a book. And came again to Joshua to the host at Shiloh. And Joshua cast lots for them in Shiloh before the Lord. And there div Joshua divided the land under the children of Israel according to their divisions. And the lot of the tribe of the children of Benjamin came up according to their families. And the coast of their lot came forth between the children of Judah and the children of Joseph. And their border on the north side from Jordan, and their border went up on the side of Jericho on the north side, and went up through the mountains westward, and the goings out thereof were at the wilderness of Beth Avon. And the border went over from thence toward Luz, to the side of Luz, which is Bethel, southward, and the border descended to Adaroth Adar, near the hill that lieth on the south side of the nether Beth Horon. And the border was drawn from thence. And compassed the corner of the sea southward from the hill that lieth before Beth Horon southward, and the goings out thereof were at Kerjath Baal and Kerjath Jerem, a city of the children of Judah, that was the west quarter. <clears throat> and the south quarter was from the end of Kerjath Jerem, and the border went out to the west, and went out to the wells of the water of Natoa. And the border came down to the end of the mountain that lieth before the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is in the valley of the giants on the north. And descended to the valley of Hinnom to the side of Jebusai in the south, and descended into Enrogel. And was drawn from the north, and went to Enshemesh, and went, for, and went forth from Gileoth, which is over against the going of Adumim, and descended to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. And passed along toward the south side over against Arbot northward, and went to Arabah. And the border passed along the side of Beth Hagla northward, and the go outgoings of the border were at the north bay of the Salt Sea at the south end of Jordan. This was the south coast. And Jordan was the border of it on the east side. This was the inheritance of the children of Benjamin by the coast thereof round about according to their families. Now the cities of the tribe of the children of Benjamin according to their families were Jericho and Beth Hagla in the valley of Kizaz, and Beth Arabah and Zimaram and Bethel and Avim and Para and Ophrah and Sephar Hamaniah and Hophni and Gab Gab Gaba, twelve cities with their villages, Gibeon and Ramah and Beeroth and Mizpah and Shimarah and Maza and Recham and Ipril and Tarlah, and Zelah, Elof and Jubasai, which is Jerusalem, Gibeath and Kerjath, fourteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Benjamin according to their families. And the second lot came forth to Simeon, even to the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families and their inheritance with which was, was, was within the inheritance of the children of Judah. And they had their inheritance in Beersheba, and Sheba, and Maladah, and Harjushwal, and Bala, and Azing, and Elatod, and Bethol, and Horma, and Ziklag, and Beth Makaroth, and Hazar Suza, and Beth Lebioth, and Shirion, thirteen cities and their villages, Ain, and Remon, and Etar, and Ashan, four cities and their villages. And all the villages that were round about these cities to Bethlehabir, Ramoth of the south, this is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simeon according to their families. Out of the portion of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon, for the part of the children of Judah was too much for them. Therefore, the children of Simeon had their inheritance within the inheritance of them. And the third lot came up for the children of Zebulon according to their families, and the border of their inheritance was to Sarid. And the border went up toward the sea and Malarah and reached to Debesheth and reached to the river that is before Jokanim and turned from Sarid eastward toward the sun rising under the border of Chilas Tabor and then goeth out to Debereth and up to Japia and from thence passeth on along to Gittah Hefer and to Edakazin and goeth out to Remen Midiar and to Nea. And the border compasseth it on the north side of Hanahoth, and the outgoings thereof are in the valley of Jiphthianel, and Keta, and Nala, and Shemra, and Idila, and Bethlehem, <coughs> Bethlehem, twelve cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Zebulon, according to their families, these cities with their villages. And the fourth lot came out of Issachar, and for the children of Issachar, according to their families. And their border was toward Jezreel, and Chulios, and Shunim, and Hanarim, and Shein, and Hanaroth, 
and Rabeth, and Kishion, and Abaz, and Remath, and Enganim, and Enhadah, and Beth Perizaz. And the coast reached to Tabor, and Shazamiah, and Beth Shemesh. At the outgoings of the sixth border were at Jordan, sixteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Issachar, according to their families, these cities, and their villages. And the fifth lot came out of the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, and their border was Hekla and Hala and Betin and Apshadah and Alamech and Amad and Mishael. It reacheth the Carmel westward and to Shahor Libnath and turneth toward the sun rising to Beth Dagon and reacheth the Zebulon and the valley of Jephthanel toward the south of Beth Emek and Niel and goeth to Kabul and the left hand and Hebron and Rehab and Haman and Cana, even unto the great Zidon. And then to the coast turneth to Ramah and to the strong city Tyre and the coast turneth to Hosa. And the outgoings thereof are at the sea from the coast to Achib, and Uma also, and Aphek, and Rebob, twenty and two cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, these cities with their villages. The sixth lot came out of the children of Naphtali, even to the children of Naphtali, according to their families. And their coast was from Halif to Elon to Zeniamin, and Adamai, Nekeb, and Jabneel, and Lucum, and the outgoings thereof were at Jordan. And the coast turneth westward to Asnoth Tabor, and goeth out from thence to a hook, and reacheth to Zebulon on the south side, and reacheth to Asher on the west side, and to Judah and to Jordan toward the sun rising. And the fence cities are of Zedem and Zir and Hamath and Rakath and Chinnereth and Admah and Ramah and Hazor and Kedish and Edra and Enhazor and Iron and Migdiel, Horam and Bethanah and Beth Shemesh, nineteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, according to their families, the cities and their villages. And the seventh lot came out for the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families. And the coast of their inheritance was Zorah and Eshtol and Irimesh and Shabalim and Ajalon and Jethoth and Elon and Timnathah and Ekron and Eltakah and Kibithon and Baloth and Jehud and Bini Barak and Kath Gath Rimon and Majorakon and Rakon, the border before Japho. And the coast of the children of Dan went out too little for them. Therefore the children of Dan went up to fight against Leshem and took it and smote it with the edge of the sword, and they possessed it, and they dwelt therein, and called Leshem Dan after the name of Dan their father. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families, these cities with their villages. When they had made an end of dividing the land for inheritance by their coast, the children of Israel gave an inheritance to Joshua the son of Nun among them. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city which asked even Timnath Sarah in Mount Ephraim, and he built the city and dwelt therein. These are the inheritances which Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of the fathers and the tribes of the children of Israel divided for an inheritance by lot in Shiloh before the Lord as the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So they made an end of dividing the country. The Lord also spake unto Joshua, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, Appoint out for you cities of refuge, whereof I spake unto you by the hand of Moses, that the slayer that killeth any person unawares and unwittingly may flee thither. And they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. And when he that doth flee unto one of those cities shall stand at the entering in of the gate and shall declare his cause in the ears of the elders of that city, they shall take him into the city unto them and give him a place that he may dwell amongst them. And if the avenger of blood pursue after him, then they shall not deliver the slayer up into his hand because he smote his neighbor unwillingly and hated him not before time. And he shall dwell in that city until he stand before the congregation for judgment and until the death of the high priest that shall be in those days. Then shall the slayer return and come into his own city and unto his own house unto the city from whence he fled. And they appointed Kedesh in Galilee and Mount Nephtali and Shechem in Mount Ephraim and Kerjeth Arba, which is Hebron in the Mount of Judah. And on the other side, Jordan, by Jericho eastward, they assigned Bezar in the wilderness upon the plain of the tribe of Reuben and Ramoth in Gilead out of the tribe of Gad and Golan in Bashan out of the tribe of Manasseh. These were the cities appointed for all the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among them that whosoever killeth any person at unaware might flee thither and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood until he stood before the congregation. Then came near the heads of the fathers of the Levites and the Eleazar the priests, and they said unto Joshua the son of Nun, and unto the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. And they spake unto them in Shiloh in the land of Canaan, saying, The Lord commanded by the hand of Moses to give us cities to dwell in with the suburbs thereof for our cattle. And the children of Israel gave unto the Levites out of their inheritance as the, at the commandment of the Lord these cities and their suburbs. 
And the lot came out for the families of the Kohathites and the children of Aaron, the priests, which were of the Levites, had by lot out of the tribe of Judah and out of the tribe of Simeon and out of the tribe of Benjamin 13 cities. And the rest of the children of Kohath had by lot out of the families of the tribe of Ephraim and out of the tribe of Dan and out of the half tribe of Manasseh 10 cities. And the children of Gershon had by lot out of the families of the tribe of Issachar and out of the tribe of Asher and out of the tribe of Naphtali and out of the half tribe of Manasseh in Bashan 13 cities. The children of Mary by their families had out of the tribe of Reuben and had out of the tribe of Gad and out of the tribe of Zebulun 12 cities. And the children of Israel gave by lot unto the Levites these cities with their suburbs as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. And they gave out of the tribe of the children of Judah and out of the tribe of the children of Simeon these cities which are here mentioned by name. Which the children of Aaron, being of the families of the Kohathites, who were of the children of Levi, had, for theirs was the first lot. <clears throat> and they gave them the city of Arba, the father of Anak, which city is Hebron, in the hill country of Judah, with the suburbs thereof round about it. But the fields of the city and the villages thereof gave they to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, for his possession. Thus they gave to the children of Aaron, the priest Hebron, with their suburbs, to be a city of refuge for the slayer and Libna with her suburbs, and Jetar with her suburbs, and Eshemoah with her suburbs, and Holon with her suburbs, and Debir with her suburbs, and Anan with her suburbs, and Judah with her suburbs, and Beth Shemesh with her suburbs, nine cities out of those two tribes. And of the tribes of Benjamin, Gibeon with her suburbs, Giba with her suburbs, Anahoth with her suburbs, and Almond with her suburbs, four cities. And all the cities of the children of Aaron, the priest, were thirteen cities with her suburbs. And the families of the children of Koath, the Levites, which remained of the children of the Koath, even they had the cities of their lot out of the tribe of Ephraim. For they gave them Shechem with her suburbs in Mount Ephraim to be a city of refuge for the slayer and Gezar with her suburbs. And Kizabam with her suburbs and Beth Horon with her suburbs, four cities. And out of the tribe of Dan, Elkatah with her suburbs and Gibeathon with her suburbs, Ashelon with her suburbs, Gathremon with her suburbs, four cities. And out of the half tribe of Manasseh, Tanakh with her suburbs and Gathremon with her suburbs, two cities. And all the cities were ten with her suburbs for the families of the children of Kohath that remain. And under the children of Gershon, of the families of the Levites, out of the other half tribe of Manasseh, they gave Golan and Bashan with her suburbs, to be a city of refuge for the slayer, and Beshterah with her suburbs, two cities, and out of the tribe of Issachar, Kishon with her suburbs, and Deborah with her suburbs, and Jarmuth with her suburbs, in Ganem with her suburbs, four cities, and out of the tribe of Asher, Mishal with her suburbs, and Abdon with her suburbs, Helktalah with her suburbs, and Rehob with her suburbs, four cities, and out of the tribe of Naphtali, Kadesh in Galilee with her suburbs, to be a city of refuge for the slayer, and Hamoth Dor and her suburbs, and Kartan with her suburbs, three cities and all the cities of the Gershonites according to the families with their 13 cities with their suburbs and under the families of the children of Mary the rest of the Levites the tribe of Zebulon Jokanim with her suburbs and Kartah with her suburbs Demda with her suburbs and Demial Nemial with her suburbs four cities and of the tribes of Reuben Bezar with her suburbs and Jaziah with her suburbs Kedemoth with her suburbs and Mepah with her suburbs four cities and out of the tribe of Gad, Ramoth and Gilead with her suburbs, to be a city of refuge for the slayer, and Manahem with her suburbs, Heshbon with her suburbs, and Jazir with her suburbs, four cities in all. So all the cities of the children of Mary I by their families, which were remaining of the families of the Levites, were by their lot twelve cities. And all the cities of the Levites with the possession of the children of Israel were forty and eight cities with their suburbs. These cities were Every one with their suburbs round about them, thus were all these cities. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he sware to give unto their fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about, according to all that he sware unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all of their enemies into their hand. There failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. Then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh. And he said unto them, Ye have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. Ye have not left your brethren these many days unto this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brethren as he hath promised them. Now therefore return ye, and get you to your tents, and unto the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side Jordan. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord your God, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all of your hearts and with all of your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their tents. 
Now to the one half tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given possession in Bashan. But the other half thereof gave Joshua among their brethren on this side Jordan westward. And when Joshua sent them away, also into their tents, then he blessed them. And he spake unto them, saying, Return with much riches unto your tents, and with very much cattle, with silver, and with gold, and with brass, and with iron, and with very much raiment. Divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel out of Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan, to go into the country of Gilead, to the land of their possessions, whereof they were possessed, according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. And when they came into the borders of Jordan, they are in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh built there an altar by Jordan, a great altar to see, to see to. And the children of Israel heard say, Behold, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar over against the land of Canaan in the borders of Jordan at the passage of the children of Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh to go up to war against them. And the children of Israel sent unto the children of Reuben and to the children of Gad and to the half-tribe of Manasseh into the land of Gilead, Phinehas the son of Eleazar the priest, and with him ten princes of each chief house, a prince throughout all the tribes of Israel. And each one was a head of the house of their fathers among the thousands of Israel. And they came unto the children of Reuben and to the children of Gad and to the half-tribe of Manasseh unto the land of Gilead, and they spake with them, saying, Thus saith the whole congregation of the Lord, What trespass is this that ye have committed against the Lord God of Israel, to turn away this day from following the Lord, and that ye have builded you an altar, that ye might rebel this day against the Lord? Is the iniquity of Peor too little for us, from which we are not cleansed unto this day, although there was a plague in the congregation of the Lord? But that ye must turn away this day from following the Lord? And it will be, seeing you rebel today against the Lord, that tomorrow he will be wroth with the whole congregation of Israel. Notwithstanding, if the land of your possession be unclean, then pass ye over into the land of the possession of the Lord, wherein the Lord's tabernacle dwelleth, and take possession among us. But rebel not against the Lord, nor rebel against us, in building you an altar beside the altar of the Lord your God. Did not Achan the son of Zerai commit a trespass in the accursed thing, and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel, and that man perished not alone in his iniquity? Then the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh answered and said unto the heads of the thousands of Israel, The Lord God of gods, the Lord God of gods, he knoweth, and Israel he shall know. If it be in rebellion, or if it is in transgression against the Lord, save us not this day that we built us an altar to turn from following the Lord, or if to offer their own burnt offering or meat offering, or if to offer peace offerings thereon, let the Lord himself require it. And if we have not rather done it for fear of this thing, saying, In time to come, your children might speak unto your, our children, saying, What have ye to do with the Lord God of Israel? For the Lord hath made Jordan a border between us and you, your children of Reuben and children of Gad. You have no part in the Lord. So shall your children make our children cease from fearing the Lord. Therefore we said, Let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offering nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between us and you and our generations after us, that we might do the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings and with our sacrifices and with our peace offerings, that your children may not say to our children in time to come, You have no part in the Lord. Therefore said we, that it shall be when they should say to us, or to our generations in time to come, that we may say again, Behold the pattern of the altar of the Lord, which our fathers made, not for burnt offerings, nor for sacrifices, but it is a witness between us and you. God forbid that we should rebel against the Lord and turn this day from following the Lord, to build an altar for burnt offerings, for meat offerings, or for sacrifices, beside the altar of the Lord God that is before his tabernacle." And when Phinehas, the priest, and the princes of the congregation, and the heads of the thousands of Israel heard, with which he were, was, heard the words that the children of Reuben, and the children of Gad, and the children of Manasseh spake, it pleased them. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, said unto the children of Reuben, and to the children of Gad, and to the children of Manasseh, This day we perceive that the Lord is among us. Because ye have not committed this trespass against the Lord, ye have now, now ye have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of the Lord. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, and the princes, returned from the children of Reuben, and from the children of Gad, and from the land of Gilead, unto the land of Canaan, to the children of Israel, and brought them word again. 
And the thing pleased the children of Israel. And the children of Israel blessed God and did not intend to go up against them in battle to destroy the land wherein the children of Reuben and Gad dwelt. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad called the altar Ed. For it shall be a witness between us that between witness between us that the Lord is God and it came to pass as long a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all of their enemies round about that Joshua waxed old and stricken in his age and Joshua called for all of Israel and for their elders and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and said unto them I am old and stricken in age and ye have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off even unto the great sea westward. And the Lord God, he shall expel them from before you and drive them out of your sight. And ye shall possess their land as the Lord your God promised unto you. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep all and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that ye come not among these nations, that these remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow down yourselves unto them, but cleave unto the Lord your God, as ye have done unto this day. For the Lord hath driven out from among you great nations and strong, but as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you, as he hath promised you. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves, that ye love the Lord your God. Else if ye do in any wise, go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriages with them, and go in unto them, and they unto you, know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. But they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord God hath given you. And behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. And you know in all of your hearts and in all of your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you are all come to pass unto you, and not one thing failed thereof. Therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things until he have destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. When you have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and you shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given unto you. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and called for the elders of Israel, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood, and I led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his seed, and I gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it, but Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt, according to that which I did among them. And afterward I brought you out. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt. And ye came into the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and brought the sea upon them, and he covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season." And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side, Jordan. And they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, that ye might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. And ye went over Jordan and came unto Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I delivered them into your hand. And I sent the hornet before you, which drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with my sword nor with my bow. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, in cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them, and the vineyards and the olive yards which ye planted not do ye eat of. Now therefore fear the Lord, 
and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your fathers which we served on the other side of the flood. Or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye now dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage. And which did those great signs in our sight. And preserved us all the way wherein we went. And among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people. Even the Amorites which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord. For he is our our God and Joshua said unto the people ye cannot serve the Lord for he is a holy God he is a jealous God he will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins if ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he hath done you good and the people said unto Joshua nay but we will serve the Lord and Joshua said unto the people ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him and they said we are witnesses now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and took a great stone, and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us, and it shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, every man unto his inheritance. And it came to pass after these things that Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being a hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Tenath Sirah, which is Mount Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gash. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought by the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of silver. And it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, died. And they buried him in a hill that pertained to Phinehas, his son, which was given him in Mount Ephraim. Pow. Hallelujah. Amen. Whoo. We're going we gonna to keep you on read a little bit? I don't, I don't know if you want the first chapter. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's let's take like a five minute break, and then uh, I'm gonna come back. I'll I'll get through the the, fir the first chapter of Judges, and then maybe if you can get through a, a few chapters, and then I'll be good to to finish out Judges tonight. Amen. Y'all want to finish out Judges? Amen. Go to Judges. Oh yeah. We'll do. Uh, it's like what twenty one chapters. Twenty one ain't bad. And then Ruth's only four. Might as well stick around for Judges and Ruth. Amen. All right, so let's take a, a quick break. You want to read Ruth? Okay, that, that's what I'll let you do then. We, we, we'll do that. All right, let's take about a five-minute break.
All right. Well, we're just going to crank back into it. So welcome everybody back online. And uh, I always check the comments and people are like, oh, my goodness, did he quit? And everybody's like, he's on a break, he's on a break, he's on a break. So we are back and uh, we are starting Judges. Wow, we've come a long ways. Amen. Judges and chapter number one. And we will do our very, very best to get through all 21 chapters and then the four chapters of Ruth and then go home and get some good rest and figure out our schedule tomorrow. Amen. The book of Judges. Chapter 1, now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. And Judah said unto Simeon, his brother, Come up now with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and likewise we will go uh, with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went up with him. And Judah went up. And the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they slew them in Bezek, 10,000 men. And they found an Adonai Bezek in Bezek, and they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. But Ado Bezek fled, and they pursued after him, and they caught him, and they cut off his thumbs and his great toes. And Adonai Bezek said, Three score and ten kings, having their, their thumbs and their great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table. As I have done, so God hath requited me. And they brought him into Jerusalem, and there he died. Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem and had taken it and smitten it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. And afterward, the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites that dwelt in the mountain and in the south and in the valley. And Judah went against the Canaanites that dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron before was Kerjeth Arba. And they slew Sheshai, the Aheman, and Talamai. And from thence he went into the inhabitants of Debir, and the name of Debir before was Kerjath Saphir. And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kerjath Saphir and taketh it, to him will I give Achish my daughter to wife. And Othanel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it, and he gave him Aksa his daughter to wife. And it came to pass, when she came to him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted off from her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wilt thou? And she said unto him, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a south land. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. And the children of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of, Judea, of Judah, which lieth in the south of Arad. And they went and they dwelt among the people. And Judah went with Simeon, his brother, and they slew the Canaanites that inhabited Zephath and utterly destroyed it. And the name of the city was called Hormah. Also Judah took Gaza with the coast thereof, and Ascalon with the coast thereof, and Ekron with the coast thereof. And the Lord was with Judah. And he drave out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron. And they gave Hebron unto Caleb, as Moses said. And he expelled thence the three sons of Anak. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem, but the Jebusites dwelt with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem unto this day. And the house of Joseph, they also went up against Bethel, and the Lord was with them. And the house of Joseph sent to descry Bethel, but the name of the city before was Luz. And the spies saw a man come forth out of the city, and they said unto him, Show us, we pray thee, the entrance into the city, and we will show thee mercy." And when he showed them the entrance into the city, they smote the city with the edge of the sword, but they let go the man and all of his family. And the man went into the city of the Hittites and built the city and called the name thereof Luz, which is the name thereof of the city to this day. Neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of Bethsheen and her towns, nor Tanakh and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Ibalim and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo and her towns. But the Canaanites would dwell in the land. And it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites to tribute and did not utterly drive them out. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwell in Gezer among them. Neither did Zebulun drive out the inhabitants of Kitaron nor the inhabitants of Nahalal, but the Canaanites dwell among them and became tributaries. Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Acho, nor the inhabitants of Zadon, nor Alab, nor of Akzib, nor of Helbah, nor of Aphek, nor of Rehob. 
But the Asherites dwell among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. Neither did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, nor the inhabitants of Beth Hanath, but the, those that dwell among the Canaanites and the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and Beth Anath became tributaries unto them. And the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountain, for they would not suffer them to come down to the valley. But the Amorites would dwell in Mount Herges in Ajalon in Shalabim. Yet the hand of the house of Joseph prevailed so that they became their tributaries. And the coast of the Amorites was going up from Acharim from the rock and upward. I'm going to keep going just a little bit because I'm, I'm feeling all right. I'm going to give it to you in a minute. And the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you into the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass, when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of that place Bochum, and they sacrificed there unto the Lord. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in timnath Heres in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers which brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them. And they bowed themselves unto them and they provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies whithersoever they went out the hand of the Lord was against them for evil as the Lord had said and as the Lord had sworn unto them and they were greatly distressed nevertheless the Lord raised up judges which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them and yet they would not hearken unto their judges but they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them they turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in obeying the commandments of the Lord but they did not so and when the Lord raised them up judges then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn ways. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because that this people had transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers and have not hearkened unto my voice, I will not, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died, that through them I may prove Israel, whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. Therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many as Israel had not known all the wars of Canaan. Only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war at the least such as before knew nothing thereof. Namely, five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Baal Hermon unto the entering in of Hamath. And they were there to prove Israel by them, to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites. And they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord their God and served Balaam and the groves. Therefore the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he sold them into the hand of Cushath Chilaram, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served Cushath Chilaram eight years. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, 
the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel, and he went out to war, and the Lord delivered uh, Cushan Rishaman uh, and his hand of the king of Mesopotamia into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Cushan Rithiam. And the land had rest for 40 years, and Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek. And they went, and they smote Israel, and possessed the city of palm trees. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, for 18 years. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, a man left-handed. And by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. But Ehud made him a dagger which had two edges of a cubit length, and he did gird it under his raiment upon his right thigh. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab, and Eglon was a very fat man. And when he had made an end to offer the present, he sent away the people that bear the present. But he himself turned again from the quarries that were by Gilgal, and he said, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king, who said, Keep silence. And all that stood by him went out from him. And Ehud came unto him, and he was sitting in a summer parlor which he had for himself alone. And Ehud said, I have a message from God unto thee. And he arose out of his seat. And Ehud put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly. And the haft also went in after the blade, and the fat closed upon the blade, so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly. And the dirt came out. Then Ehud went forth through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them. And when he was gone out, his servants came, and when they saw that, behold, the doors of the parlor were locked, they said, Surely he covered his feet in his summer chamber. And they tarried till they were ashamed. And behold, he opened not the doors of the parlor, therefore they took a key and opened them, and behold, their Lord was fallen down dead on the earth. And Ehud escaped while they tarried, and passed beyond the quarries, and escaped unto Syriath. And it came to pass, when he was come, that he blew a trumpet in the mountain of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the mount, and he before them. And he said to them, Follow after me, for the Lord hath delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. And they went down after him, and took the fords of Jordan toward Moab, and suffered not a man to pass over. And they slew of Moab at that time about 10,000 men, all lusty, and all men of valor, and there escaped not a man. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest for fourscore years. And after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goat, and he delivered Israel. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabon, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in uh, Horesheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel." And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun? And I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kedesh. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali into Kedesh. And he went up with 10,000 men at his feet. And Deborah went up with him. Now Hebar the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had severed himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent under the plain of Zanaim, which is by Kedesh. And they showed Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinoam, was gone unto Mount Tabor. And Sisera gathered together all of his chariots, even nine hundred chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him from Hasheroth of the Gentiles unto the river Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up! For this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? 
So Barak went down from the Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And the Lord discomfited Sisera and all of his chariots and all of his hosts with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lighted down from his chariot and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the host unto Hesheroth of the Gentiles, and all the host of Syria fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. Howbeit Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Hebar, the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazar, and the house of Hebar, the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. Again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be. When any man doth come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man here? That thou shalt say, No. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent, and took a hammer in her hand, and went softly unto him, and smote the nail into his temples, and fastened it to the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. That was boss right there. That was boss. And behold... As Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said unto him, Come, and I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin the king of Canaan before the children of Israel, and the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin the king of Canaan until they had destroyed Jabin the king of Canaan. All right, let me see. I'm going to get you to chapter 6, and I'm going to turn it over to you, okay? So I'm going to do one more chapter. And then I'm going to give my voice a rest for a few chapters. Then sang Deborah, Deborah and Barak the song of Abinoam on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel, when the people willingly offered themselves. <clears throat> Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped, the clouds also dropped water. The mountains melted from before the Lord, even that Sinai before the Lord God of Israel. In the days of Shemgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked through byways. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, and I arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods, then was war in the gates. And there was a shield or a spear seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. Speak, ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. They that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Awake. Awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead the captivity captive, thou son of Abinoam. Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. Out of Ephraim was there a root of them against Amalek. Uh, after thee, Benjamin, among the people, out of Machir came down the governors, and out of Zebulun they that handled the pen of the writer. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah, even Issachar and all of Barak. And he sent them on foot into the valley for the divisions of Reuben that were great thoughts of heart. Why abodest thou among the sheepfolds to hear the bleedings of the flocks? For the divisions of Reuben that were great searchings of heart. Gilead abode beyond Jordan, and why did Dan remain in ships? Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his breaches. Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that jeopardized their lives under the death in the high places of the field. Then came and fought. The kings came and fought. And they fought the kings of Canaan and Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. They fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. The river of Kishon swept them away, that ancient river, the river Kishon. O oh, my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. Then were the horse hoofs broken by the means of the prancings, the prancings of their mighty ones. Curse ye Meroz, said the angel of the Lord. Curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to, help of the, to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Blessed above all women shall Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. 
He asked her water, and she gave him milk. She brought forth butter in a lordly dish. She put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer, and with the hammer she smote Sisera, she smote off his head. And when she had pierced and stricken through his temples... And at her feet he bowed, he fell, he laid down. And at her feet he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. The mother of Sisera looked out a window and cried through the lattice, Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Her wise ladies answered her, Yea, she returned answer to herself. Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey? To every man a damsel or two, to Sisera a prey of divers colors, a prey of divers colors, of needlework, of divers colors, of needlework on both sides. Meet for the necks of them that take the spoil. So let all thine enemies perish, O Lord. But let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. And the land had rest for forty years. Hallelujah. All right, let you take over a few chapters, babe. Every, I want that big one. Everybody needs a JL with a nail, right? Amen. Do you want that one? All right. Judges chapter 6. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was, when Israel had sown, that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth, till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass, when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt, and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all that oppressed you, and drave them out before you, and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Oprah that pertained unto Joash the Ab Abazarite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou might, mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told of us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and they, thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in, and made ready a kid, and unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it out unto him under the oak, and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, 
Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, and he called it Jehovah Shalom until this day. It is yet in Ophrah of the Abaz Abazarites. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it, and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock in the ordered place, and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou shalt cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was, because he feared his father's household and the men of the city, that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down, and the grove was cast down that was by it, and the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. And they said one to another, Who hath done this thing? And when they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, hath done this thing. Then the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he hath cast down the altar of Baal, and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it. And Joash said unto all that stood against him, Will ye plead for Baal? Will ye save him? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death while it is yet morning. If he be a god, let him plead for himself, because one hath cast down his altar." Therefore, on that day, he called him Jeroboam, saying, Let Baal plead against him, because he hath thrown down his altar. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abiezar was gathered after him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher, and to Zebulon, and to Naphtali, and they came up to meet them. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. And it was so, for he rose up early on the morrow, and thrust the fleece together, and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. Then Jeroboam, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord God said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee. The same shall go with thee, and of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth up the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set beside, by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. And let all the other people go, every man unto his place. So the people took victuals in their hands and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man unto his tent, and retained those three hundred men. And the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Furah thy servant down to the host. 
And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterwards shall thine hands be strengthened to go down into the host. Then he went down with Phura his servant unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Malachites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came into a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. For into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the host. And it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came into the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and brake the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and brake the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the host ran and cried and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host. And the host fled to Beth Shittah and Zerarath, and to the border of Abba Maholah unto Tabath. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together after Naphtali, and out of Asher, and out of Manasseh, and pursued after the Midianites. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites, and take before them the waters unto Beth Barah and Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together, and took the waters unto Beth Barah and Jordan. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, and the, they slew Oreb upon the rock. Oreb and Zeb they slew at the winepress of, Z, of Zeb, and pursued Midian, and bought the head, heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side Jordan. And the men of Ephraim said unto him, Why hast thou served us this, that thou calledest not, when thou wentest to fight with the Midianites, and they did shod with him sharply? And he said unto them, What have I done now in comparison of you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vengeance of Abiezar? God hath delivered into your hands the princes of Midian, Orab, and Zeb. And what was I able to do in comparison of you? Then their anger was abated towards him when he had said that. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over, he and the three hundred men that were with him, faint yet pursuing them. And he said unto the men of Succoth, Give, I pray you, loaves of bread unto the people that follow me, for they be faint, and I am pursuing after Zeba and Zalmunna, kings of Midian. And the princes of Succoth said, Are the hands of Zeba and Zal Zalmunna now in thine hand, that we shall give bread unto thine army? And Gideon said, Therefore, when the Lord hath delivered Zeba and Zalmunna into mine hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. And he went up thence to Peniel and spake unto them likewise. And the pen men of Peniel answered him as the men of Succoth had answered him. And he spake also unto the men of Peniel, saying, When I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmunna were in Karkor, and their host with them, about 15,000 men, all that were left of all the hosts of the children of the east. For there fell 120,000 men that drew sword. And Gideon went up by the way of them that dwelt in the tents on the east of Nobah and Jogbaha, and smote the host, for the host were secure. 
And when Zeba and Zalmunna fled, he pursued after them and took the two kings of Midian, Midian, Zeba and Zalmunna, and discomfited all the host. And Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from battle before the sun was up and called a young man of the man of Succoth and inquired of him. And he described unto him the princes of Succoth and the elders thereof, even three score and seventeen men. And he came unto the men of Succoth and said, Behold, Zeba and Zalmunna, with whom ye did upbraid me, saying, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna now in thine hand, that we should give bread unto thy men that are weary? And he took the elders of the city and the thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them he taught the men of Succoth. And he beat down the tower of Peniel and slew the men of the city. Then said he unto Zeba and Zalmunna, What manner of men were they whom you slew at Tabor? And they answered, As thou art, so were they. Each one resembled the children of a king. And he said, They were my brethren, even the sons of my mother. As the Lord liveth, if ye had saved them alive, I would not slay you. And he said unto Jether his firstborn, Up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared, because he was yet a youth. Then Zeba and Zalmunna said, Rise thou, and fall upon us, for as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose and slew Zeba and Zalmunna and took away the ornaments that were on their camels' necks. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, but both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you, that you would give me every man the earrings of his prey, for they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, We will willingly give them. And they spread a garment and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, beside ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian, and beside the chains that were about their camels' necks. And Gideon made an ephod thereof, and put it in his city, even in Ophrah. And all Israel went thither, whoring after it, which thing became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more. And the country was in quietness forty years in the days of Gideon. And Jerubbaal, the son of Joash, went down and dwelt in his own house. And Gideon had three score and ten sons of his body begotten, for he had many wives. And his concubine that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son, whose name he called Abimelech. And Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good old age and was buried in the sepulcher of Joash, his father, in Ophrah of the Abiezrites. And it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again and went a-whoring after Balaam and made Baal Bareth their god. And the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side. Neither showed they kindness to the house of Jeroboam, namely Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had showed unto Israel. And Abimelech, the son of Jeroboam, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether is better for you, either that all the sons of Jeroboam, which are three score and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh." And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Belbereth, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. And he went unto his father's house at Ophrah and slew his brethren, the sons of Jeroboam, being three score and ten persons upon one stone, notwithstanding yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jeroboam, was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together, and all the house of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Grizim, and lifted up his voice, and cried, and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. 
the trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, Come thou, and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou, and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou, and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now, therefore, if you have done truly and sincerely, and that you have made Abimelech king, and if you have dealt with Jerubel and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you, and adventured his life far, and delivered you out of the hand of Midian, and you are risen up against my father's house this day, and have slain his sons, three score and ten persons, upon one stone, and have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerobel and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech, and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo, and let fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo, and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled, and went to Beer, and dwelt there, for fear of Abimelech his brother. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel, then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the cruelty done to three score and ten sons of Jerobel might come, and their blood be laid upon Abimelech their brother which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem which aided him in the killing of his brethren. And the men of Shechem set liars and wait for him in the top of the mountains, and they robbed all that came along that way by them, and it was told Abimelech. And Gael the son of Ebed came with his brethren, and went over to Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. And they went out into the fields and gathered their vineyards and trolled the grapes and made merry and went into the house of their God and did eat and drink and cursed Abimelech. And Gael, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech, and who is Shechem, that we should serve him? Is not he the son of Jerobel, and Zubal, his officer? Serve the men of Hamar, the father of Shechem, for why should we serve him? And would to God this people were under my hand. Then would I remove Abimelech? And he said to Abimelech, Increase thine army, and come out. And when Zubal, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gaal, the son of Ebed, his anger was kindled. And he sent messengers unto Abimelech privily, saying, Behold, Gaal, the son of Ebed, and his brethren, be come to Shechem, and behold, the for they fortified the city against thee. Now therefore go up by night, thou and thy people that is with thee, and lie and wait in the field. And it shall be that in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, thou shalt rise early and set upon the city. And behold, when he and the people that is with him come out against thee, then mayest thou do to them as thou shalt find occasion. And Abimelech rose up and all the people that were with him by night, and they laid wait against Shechem in four companies. And Gaal, the son of Ebed, went out and stood in the entering of the gate of the city. And Abimelech rose up and the people that were with him from lying in wait. And when Gaal saw the people, he said to Zebul, Behold, there come people down from the top of the mountains. And Zebul said unto him, Thou seest the shadow of the mountains as if they were men. And Gaal spoke again and said, See, there come people down by the middle of the land. And another company came along by the plain of Meaninum. Then said Zebul unto him, Where is nigh thou mouth, wherewith thou saidest, Who is Abimelech, that we should serve him? Is not this the people that thou hast despised? Go out, I pray now, and fight with them. And Gaal went out before the men of Shechem, and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him, and many were overthrown and wounded, even unto the entering of the gate. And Abimelech dealt with Arumah, and Zubal thrust out Gael his brethren, and they should not dwell in Shechem. 
And it came to pass on the morrow that the people went out into the field and they told Abimelech. And he took the people and divided them into three companies and laid wait in the field and looked and behold, the people were come forth out of the city and he rose up against them and smote them. And Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood in the entering of the gate of the city. And the two other companies ran upon all the people that were in the fields and slew them. And Abimelech fought against the city all that day. And he took the city and slew the people that was therein and beat down the city and sowed it with salt. And when all the men of the tower of Shechem heard that, they entered into an hold of the house of the God of Bereth. And it was told Abimelech that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech got him up to Mount Zalmon, he and all the people that were with him. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bough from the trees and took it and laid it on his shoulder and said unto the people that were with him, what ye have seen me do, make haste and do as I have done. And all the people likewise cut down every man his bow and followed Abimelech and put them to the hold and set the hold on fire upon them so that all the men of the tower of Shechem died also, about a thousand men and women. Then went Abimelech to Thebes and encamped against Thebes and took it. But there was a strong tower within the city, and thither fled all the men and women and all they of the city and shut it to them and got them up to the top of the tower. And Abimelech came into the tower and fought against it and went hard into the door of the tower to burn it with fire. And a certain woman cast a piece of millstone upon Abimelech's head and all to break his skull. Then he called hastily unto the young men, his armor bearer, and said unto him, Draw thy sword and slay me, that men say not of me a woman slew him. And his young men thrust him through, and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man unto his place. Thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech, which he did unto his father in slaying his 70 brethren. And all the evil of the men of Shechem did God render upon their heads. And upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jeroboam. Good job, baby. All righty. Ten, and after Abimelech there arose to defend Israel, Tola, the son of Pula, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he dwelt in Shamar in Mount Ephraim. And he judged Israel twenty and three years and died and was buried in Shamir. And after him arose Jair and Gil the Gileadite and judged Israel twenty and two years. And he had thirty sons that rode on thirty ass colts, and they had 30 cities, which are called Havoth Jair unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Kaman. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtaroth and the gods of Syria and the gods of Zidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord and served him not. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the children of Ammon. And that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel 18 years. All the children of Israel that were on the other side, Jordan, in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. Moreover, the children of Ammon passed over Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim. So Israel was sore distressed. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God and also served Balaam. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, and from the Ammon, and from the Philistines, the Zidonians also, and the Amalekites, and the Moanites, and oppress you, that they did oppress you? And ye cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hand? Yet ye have forsaken me, and served other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of tribulation. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us what server seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray, this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead, and the children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people and princes of Gilead said one to another, What man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over the inhabitants of Gilead. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of an harlot. And Gilead uh, begat Jephthah, and Gilead's wife bare him sons. And his wife's sons grew, 
and thrust out Jephthah and said unto him, that thou shalt not inherit our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there was gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out to him. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jephthah, Come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not ye hate me and expel me out of my father's house? And why are ye now come unto me when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us, if we do not so according to thy words. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. And Jephthah sent messengers unto the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What hast thou to do with me, that thou art come against me to fight in the land? And the children of Ammon answered unto the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land when they came up out of Egypt, from Arnon even unto Jack, Jackbok and unto Jordan. Now therefore restore those lands again peaceably. And Jephthah sent messengers again unto the king of the children of Ammon, and said unto him, Thus saith Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when Israel came up from Egypt and walked through the wilderness of the Red Sea and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom, saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Edom would not hearken thereunto. And in like manner they sent unto the king of Moab, but he would not consent. And Israel abode in Kadesh. Then they that went along through the wilderness and compassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab and came by the east side of the land of Moab and pitched on the other side of Arnon, but came not with the border of Moab, for Arnon was the border of Moab. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, the king of Heshbon. And Israel said unto him, Let us pass, we pray thee, through thy land into my place. But Sihon trusted not Israel to pass through his coast. But Sihon gathered all of his people and pitched in Jahaz and fought against Israel. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all the people into the hand of Israel, and they smote them. So Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of the country. <clears throat> and they possessed all the coasts of the Amorites, from Arnon, from Arnon even unto Jabok, and from the wilderness even unto Jordan. So now the Lord God of Israel hath dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel, and shouldest thou possess it? Wilt thou not possess that which Chemosh thy God giveth thee to possess? So whomsoever the Lord our God shall drive out from before us, them will we possess." And now thou art anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab. Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? While Israel dwelt in Heshbon and her towns, and in Arior and in her towns, and in all the cities that be along the coast of Arnon, three hundred years. Why, therefore, did ye not recover them within that time? Wherefore, I have not sinned against thee, but thou doest me wrong to war against me. The Lord judge between, be judged between us this day, and the children of Israel, and the children of Ammon. Howbeit the king of the children of Ammon hearkened not unto the words of Jephthah which he sent him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead of Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah of Gilead, and from Mizpah of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands. And he smote them from Arior even unto Mineth, even, the, even twenty cities, and under the plain of the vineyards with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with, his, with timbrels and with dances, and she was his only child. Beside her he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me, for I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. And she said unto him, My father, 
If thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which hath proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon. And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months, that I may go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my fellows. And he said, Go. And he sent her away for two months. And she went with her companies, uh, companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow which he had vowed. And she knew no man, and it was a custom in Israel, that the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite for four days in a year. And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said to Jephthah, Wherefore passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon? And didst not call us to go with thee. We will burn thine house upon thee with fire. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon. And when I called you, ye delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that ye delivered me not, I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon. And the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore then are ye come up to this day to fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim, because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites. And the Gileadites took the passage of Jordan before the Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites which were escaped said, Let me go over, that the men of Gilead said unto him, Art thou an Ephraimite? And he said, Nay. Then said they unto him, Say now Shibboleth. And he said, Sibboleth. For he could not frame to pronounce it correctly. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousand. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then died Jephthah in the Gileadite and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. And after him was Isbon of Bethlehem. He judged Israel. And he had thirty sons and thirty daughters whom he had sent abroad and took in thirty daughters from abroad for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. Then died Isban and was buried in Bethlehem. And after him, Elon, the Zebulonite, judged Israel. And he judged Israel ten years. And Elon, the Zebulonite, died and was buried in Ajalon in the country of Zebulon. And after him, Abdon, the son of Heliel, a Perithite, judged Israel. And he had forty sons and thirty nephews that rode on threescore and ten ass colts. And he judged Israel eight years. And Abdon, the son of Heliel, the Perithite, died and was buried in Perithon in the land of Ephraim in the Mount of the Amalekites and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years and there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites whose name was Manoah and his wife was barren and bare not and the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her behold now thou art barren and bearest not but thou shalt conceive and bear a son now therefore beware I pray thee and drink not wine nor strong drink and eat no unclean thing for lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. And now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come unto us, come again unto us, and teach us what we shall do unto this child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste, and ran, and showed her husband, and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me, that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose, and went after his wife, and came to the man, and spake unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass, how we shall order the child, and how we shall do unto him. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we have made ready a kid for thee. 
And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass, that we may do thee honor? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is a secret? So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering, and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass, when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it, and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all of these things, nor would at any time have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son, and called his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zoar and Eshtual. And Samson went down the Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up, and he told his father and his mother, and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all thy people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Go get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down and he talked with the woman and she pleased Samson well. And after a time, he returned to take her and to turn aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands, and he went on eating, and came to his father and his mother. And he gave them, and they did eat. But he told them not that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of a lion. So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast, for so used the young men to do. And it came to pass, when they saw him, that they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you, if ye can certainly declare it to me within the seven days of the feast, and find it out, then I will give you thirty sheets and thirty changes of garments. But if ye cannot declare it to me, then ye shall give me thirty sheets and thirty changes of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle, that we may hear it. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle, that we, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take that we have? Is it not so? And Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me, and lovest me not. Thou hast put, me forth, put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and hast not told it to me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it to my father nor my mother, and shall I tell it to thee? And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore upon him. And she told the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If ye had not plowed with my heifer, <laughs> ye had not known out my riddle. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and went down, he went down to Ashkelon, and threw thirty, slew thirty men of them, and took their spoil, and gave changes of raiment unto them which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. But it came to pass within a while after, in the time of the wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid. And he said, I will go into my wife into the chamber. But her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou hast utterly hated her. Therefore, I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them, though I do them a displeasure. 
And Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took firebrands and turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst of the two tails. And when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burnt up the shocks and the standing corn with the vineyards and the olives. And then the Philistines said, Who hath done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. Then Samson said unto them, Though ye have done this, yet will I be avenged of you. And after that, I will cease. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter. And he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock Edom. Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why are ye come up against us? And they answered, To bind Samson are we come up, to do him as he hath done unto us. Then three thousand men of Judah went to the top of the rock Edom and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that ye will not fall upon me yourselves. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords, and they brought him from the rock. And when it came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that were burnt with fire, and his bands were loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand, and called the name of the place Ramoth-Lehi. And he was sore athirst, and called on the Lord, and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst, and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore, he called the name of it en Hekorah, which in Lehi is in Lehi unto this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines for twenty years. Then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there a harlot, and he went in unto her. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him, and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all night, saying, In the morning, when it's day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight. And then he arose at midnight, and took the doors of the gate of the city, and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of a hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee, every one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green withs that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought her up to her seven green withs which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he brake the withs as a thread of tow is broken when it toucheth the fire. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber. And he brake them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web, and she fastened it with the pen, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep, and went out with the pen of the beam and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, 
that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all of his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all of his heart. Then the lord of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and did grind and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit, the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon their God and to rejoice. For they said, Our God hath delivered Samson our enemy into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God. For they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country which slew many of us. And it came to pass when their heart was merry that they said, Call for Samson that he may make it a sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember I pray thee and strengthen me, I pray thee only this once, O God that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up of the one in his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all of his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtol in the burying place of Manoah his father. And he judged Israel twenty years. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou cursest, and spakest also in mine ears, behold, the silver is with me, I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. And when he restored the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand, from my son, to make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto thee. Yet he restored the money unto his mother. And his mother took two hundred shekels of silver and gave them to the founder who made thereof a graven image and a molten image. And they were in the house of Micah. And the man Micah had a house of gods and made an ephod and a teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. <clears throat> in those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem, Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. And the man departed out of the city from Bethlehem, Judah, to sojourn where he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim to the house of Micah as he sojourned. And Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I am going to sojourn where I may find a place. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me, and be unto me a father and a priest, and I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year, and a suit of apparel, and thy victuals. So the Levite went in. And the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was with him as one of his sons. And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was in the house of Micah. Then said Micah, Now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to be my own priest. In those days there was no king in Israel. And in those days the tribe of the Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in. For unto that day all of their inheritance had not fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from their coast, men of valor from Zorah and from Eshtol, to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, Go, search the land who, when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. And when they were by the house of Micah, they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite. And they turned in thither, and they said unto him, Who brought thee hither? 
And what makest thou in this place? And what hast thou in here? And he said unto them, Thus and thus dealeth Micah with me, and hath hired me, and I am his priest. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee, of God, that we may know whether our way which we go shall be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace. Before the Lord is your way wherein ye go. Then the five men departed and came to Laish, and saw the people that were therein, and how they dwelt careless after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure. And there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything. And they were far from the Zidonians and had no business with any man. And they came unto their brethren to Zorah and to Eshtual. And with their brethren they said, What say ye? And they said, Arise, and we may go up against them. For we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good, and ye are still. Be not slothful to go and to enter to possess the land. When ye go, ye shall come unto the people secure and to a large land, for God hath given it into your hands, a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. And there went out from thence the family of the Danites of the Zorah and of Eshtol, 600 men appointed with weapons of war. And they went up, and they pitched in kerjeth Jerem in Judah. Wherefore they called the place Manahem Dam unto this day. Behold, it is behind kerjeth Jerem. And they passed from thence unto Mount Ephraim, and came unto the house of Micah. Then answered the five men that went to spy out the country of Laish, and said unto their brethren, Do ye know that there is in this house an ephod, a teraphim, and a graven image, and a molten image? Now therefore consider what ye have to do. And they turned thitherward, and came to the house of the young man, the Levite, even the house of Micah, and saluted him. And the six hundred men, appointed with their weapons of war, which were of the children of Dan, stood by the entering of the gate. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up and came in thither and took the graven image and the ephod and the teraphim and the molten image and the priest stood in the entering of the gate with the 600 men that were appointed with the weapons of war. And these went into Micah's house and fetched the carved image and the ephod and the teraphim and the molten image. Then said the priest unto them, What do ye? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon thy mouth and go with us and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man, or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and to a family in Israel? And the priest's heart was glad, and he took the ephod and the teraphim and the graven image, and he went in the midst of the people. So they turned and departed, and put the little ones and the cattle and the carriage before them. And when they were a good way from the house of Micah, the men that were in their houses near to Micah's house were gathered together and overtook the children of Dan. And they cried unto the children of Dan, and they turned their faces and said to Micah, What aileth thee that thou comest with such a company? And he said, Ye have taken away my gods which I made, and the priest, and ye are gone away. And what, and what have I more? And what is this that ye say unto me, What aileth thee? And the children of Dan said unto him, Let not thy voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows run upon thee, and thou lose thy life with the lives of thy household. And the children of Dan went their way. And when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back unto his own house. And they took the things which Micah had made, and the priest which he had, and they came to Laish, and unto a people that were quiet and secure, and they smote them with the edge of the sword, and burnt the city with fire. And there was no deliverer, because it was far from Zidon, and they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley that lieth by Beth Rehob, and they built a city, and they dwelt therein. And they called the name of that city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, who was born unto Israel. Howbeit the name of the city was Laish at the first. And the children of Dan set up the graven image, and Jonathan the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. All right, let me get a drink because we're about to get in a crazy chapter of the Bible now. Matter of fact, this is probably one of the top craziest chapters that you will ever read. It's the most PG-13 chapter in the whole Old Testament, and we're about to read it. Amen? It's probably not even PG-13. It's probably worse than that. Amen? It is a uh, very graphic chapter of the Bible, but it's in the Bible, so let's rock. <coughs> and it came to pass in those days, when there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim, who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. And his concubine played the whore against him and went away from her unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah, and was there four whole months. And her husband rose and went after her to speak friendly unto her and to bring her again, having his servant with him and a couple of asses. And she brought him into her father's house. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. And his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him. And he abode with him for three days, so they did eat and drink and lodge there. 
And it came to pass on the fourth day that when they arose early in the morning that he rose up to depart and the damsel's father said unto his son-in-law, Comfort thine heart with a morsel of bread and afterward go your way. And they sat down and did eat and drink, both of them together. For the damsel's father had said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night, and let thine heart be merry. And when the man rose up to depart, his father-in-law urged him, therefore he lodged there again. And he rose early in the morning on the fifth day to depart. And the damsel's father said, Comfort thine heart, I pray thee. And they tarried until afternoon, and they did eat both of them. And when the man rose up to depart, he and his concubine and his servant, his father-in-law, the damsel's father, said unto him, Behold, now the day draweth toward evening. I pray you tarry all night. Behold, the day groweth to an end. Lodge here, and thine heart may be merry. And tomorrow get you up early on your way, that thou mayest go home. But the man would not tarry that night. But he rose up, and he departed, and came over against Jebus, which is Jerusalem. And there were with him two asses saddled. His concubine also was with him. And when they were by Jebus, the day was far spent. And the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee, and let us turn into this city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. And his master said unto him, We will not turn aside thither into this city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to Gibeah. And he said unto his servant, Come, and let us draw near to one of these places to lodge all night in Gibeah or in Ramah. And they passed on, and they went their way. And the sun went down upon them when they were by Gibeah, which belongeth to Benjamin. And they turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat him down in the street of the city, for there was no man that took them into his house to lodging. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even which was also of Mount Ephraim. And he sojourned in Gibeah, but the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whither goest thou, and whence comest thou? And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the south of Mount Ephraim, to the side of Mount Ephraim, from thence am I. And I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord. And there is no man that receiveth me to the house. Yet there is both straw and provender for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me and for thy handmaid and for the young man which is with thy servant. There is no want of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with thee, howsoever. Let all thy wants lie upon me, only lodge not thou in the street. So he brought him into his own house and gave provender unto the asses, and they washed their feet, and they did eat and drink. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is coming to my house, do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them will I bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house, and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up, and let us be going. But none answered. Then the man took her upon an ass, and the man rose up and got him to his own place. And when he was coming to his house, he took a knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with her bones into twelve pieces and sent her into all the coasts of Israel. And it was so that all that saw it said, There was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider of it, take advice, and speak your minds. Then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man from Dan even to Beersheba with the land of Gilead unto the Lord in Mizpah. And the chief of all the people, even all the tribes of Israel, presented themselves in the assembly of the people of God, 400,000 footmen that drew the sword. Now the children of Benjamin heard that the children of Israel were gone up to Mizpah. Then said they to the children of Israel, Tell us, how was this wickedness? And the Levite, the husband of the woman that was slain, answered and said, I came to Gibeah that belongeth to Benjamin, I and my concubine to lodge. And the men of Gibeah rose against me and beset the house round about upon me by night and thought to have slain me. And my concubine have they forced that she is dead. 
And I took my concubine and I cut her in pieces. And I sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel. For they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel. Behold, ye are all the children of Israel. Give here your advice and your counsel. And all the people arose as one man, saying, We will not any of us go to his tent, neither will any of us turn into his house. But now this shall be a thing which we will do to Gibeah. We will go up by lot against it. And we will take ten men of a hundred throughout all the tribes of Israel, and a hundred of a thousand, and a thousand out of ten thousand, and fetch vigils for the people that they may, that they may do, and come to Gibeah and Benjamin according to all the folly that they have wrought throughout Israel." So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, knit together as one man. And the tribes of Israel sent men throughout all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What wickedness is this that you have done among us? And now therefore deliver us the men, the children of Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and put away the evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities of Gibeah to go out to battle against the children of Israel. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time of the cities, twenty and six thousand men that drew the sword, beside the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered seven hundred chosen men. Among all this people, there were seven hundred chosen men left-handed. Everyone could sling stones at a hairbreadth and not miss. And the men of Israel, beside Benjamin, were numbered four hundred thousand men that drew the sword, all these were men of war. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, Which of us shall go up first to battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. And the children of Israel rose up in the morning and encamped against Gibeah. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them in Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day twenty and two thousand men. And the people of the men of Israel encouraged themselves and set their battle again in array in the place where they put themselves in array on the first day. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until even and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord said, Go up against him. And the children of Israel came again, came near against the children of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel 18,000 men, all those that drew the sword. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up, uh, came to the house of God and wept and sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until even and burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the Ark of the Covenant was there in those days. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Arnon, stood in it in those days, saying, Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother, or shall I cease? And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thine hand. And Israel set liars in wait around about Gibeah. And the children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin on the third day and put themselves in array against Gibeah as at other times. And the children of Benjamin went out against the people and were drawn away from the city. And they began to smite of the people and kill as at other times in the highways of the one which goeth up to the house of God. And the other to Gibeah in the field about 30 men of Israel. And the children of Benjamin said, they are smitten down before us as at the first. But the children of Israel said, Let us flee, and draw them from the city under the highways. And all the men of Israel rose up out of their place, and put themselves in array at Baal Tamar. And the liars in wait of Israel came forth out of their places, even out of the meadows of Gibeah. And there came against Gibeah ten thousand chosen men out of all of Israel, and the battle was sore. But they knew not that evil was near them. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel. And the children of Israel destroyed of the Benjamites that day twenty and five thousand and a hundred men. All these drew the sword. So the children of Benjamin saw that they were smitten. For the men of Israel gave place to the Benjamites because they trusted under the liars in wait that were set beside Gibeah. And the liars in wait hasted and rushed into Gibeah. And the liars in wait drew themselves along and smote all the city with the edge of the sword. Now there was an appointed sign between the men of Israel and the liars in wait, that they should make a great flame with smoke rise up out of the city. And when the men of Israel were tired in the battle, Benjamin began to smite and kill of the men of Israel, about 30 persons. For they said, Surely they are smitten down before us, as in the first battle. 
But when the flame began to arise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjamites looked behind them, and behold, the flame of the city ascended up to heaven. And when the men of Israel turned again, the men of Benjamin were amazed, for they saw that evil was come up upon them. Therefore they turned their backs before the men of Israel unto the way of the wilderness, but the battle overtook them. And they which came out of the cities, they destroyed in the midst of them. Thus they enclosed the Benjamites round about and chased them and trod them down with ease over Gibeah toward the sun rising. And there fell of Benjamin 18,000 men. All these were men of valor. And they turned and fled toward the wilderness unto the rock Rimon. And they gleaned of them in the highways 5,000 men and pursued hard after them in Gidom and slew 2,000 men of them so that all which fell that day of Benjamin were 20 and 5,000 men that drew the sword. All these were men of valor. But 600 men turned and fled to the wilderness unto the rock Rimon and abode in the rock Rimon for four months. And the men of Israel turned again upon the children of Benjamin and smote them with the edge of the sword, as well as the men of every city and the beast and all that came to hand. And all they set fire on the cities and all that they came to. Whew. That's a lot. Moral of the story, side with Sodomites, get destroyed. Amen. Chapter 21. Now the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpah, saying, There shall not any of us give his daughter unto a Benjamite to wife. And the people came to the house of God and abode there till seven, and they abode there till even before God and lifted up their voices and they wept sore and said, O oh Lord God of Israel, why has this come to pass in Israel that there should be today one tribe lacking in Israel? And it came to pass on the morrow that the people rose early and built there an altar and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the children of Israel said, Woe! Whoa, who is there among all the tribes of it? Woe to, amen. Who is there among all the tribes of Israel that came not unto the congregation unto the Lord? For they had made a great oath concerning him that came not up to the Lord to Mizpah, saying, He shall surely be put to death. And the children of Israel repented them for Benjamin their brother and said, There is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. How shall we do for wives for them that remain? seeing that we have sworn by the Lord that we will not give them of our daughters to wives. And they said, What one is there of the tribes of Israel that came not up to Mizpah to the Lord? And behold, there came none of the camp from Jabesh-Gilead to the assembly, for the people were numbered. And behold, there were none of the inhabitants of Jabesh-Gilead there. And the congregation sent thither 12,000 men of the violentists and commandest them, saying, Go and smite the inhabitants of Jabesh-Gilead with the edge of the sword, with the women and the children." And this is the thing that ye shall do. Ye shall utterly destroy every male and every woman that hath lain by man. And they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead 400 young virgins that had not known man by lying with any male. And they brought them unto the camp to Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. And the whole congregation sent some to speak to the children of Benjamin that were in the rock Rimon and to call peaceably unto them. And Benjamin came again at that time, and they gave them wives which they saved alive of the women of Jabesh Gilead, and yet they suffered, and yet they sufficed them not. And the people repented them for Benjamin, because that the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. Then the elders of the congregation said, How shall we do for wives for them that remain, seeing the women are destroyed out of Benjamin? And they said, There must be an inheritance of them that be escaped of Benjamin, that a tribe be not destroyed out of Israel. Howbeit, we may not give them wives of our daughters, for the children of Israel have sworn, saying, Cursed be he that giveth a wife to Benjamin. Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh yearly in a place which is on the north side of Bethel, on the east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel to Shechem, and on the south of Lebanon. Therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go and lie in wait in the vineyards, and see, and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in dances, then come ye out of the vineyards and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh and go to the land of Benjamin. And it shall be when their fathers or their brethren come upon us to complain that we will say unto them, be favorable unto them for our sakes, because we reserve not to each man his wife in the way, uh, in the war. For ye did not give them unto us at this time that ye should be guilty. And the children of Benjamin did so, and took them wives according to their number, of them that danced, whom they caught, whom they went and returned unto their inheritance, and repaired the cities, and they dwelt in them. And the children of Israel 
departed thence at that time, every man to his tribe and to his family, and they went out from thence, every man to his inheritance. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. We made it. All right. Well, you want to break or you just want to hit it? Just go for it. All right. You can stand up. Am I good? You can stand up while she reads. I might have to. Amen. Let you read Ruth, baby. I know it. Get it, girl. This is one of my favorite books in the Bible. Nice. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, let me keep yep. that up here. Yeah. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the, land, in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Shilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech... Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left, and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Malon and Shilion died as also both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people and giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughter-in-laws with her. And they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said again, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, I will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. So they two went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her harp was too light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reaper, reapers answered and said, 
It is I, the Moabitish damsel, that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that thou shalt not touch thee? And when thou art, Arthas, go unto thee vessels, and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband. And thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity, and art come unto people which thou knewest not. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime, come hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the wheat reapers, and he reached her reached her parched corn and she did eat and was sufficed and left and when she was risen up to glean boaz commanded his young men saying let her glean even among the sheaves and reproach her not and let her fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not so she gleaned in the field until even and beat out that she had gleaned and it was about an ephah of barley and she took it up and went into the city and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned and she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed and her mother-in-law said unto her where hast thou gleaned today and where where wrongest thou blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee and she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought and said the man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. And Naomi said to her, daughter-in-law, blessed be he of the Lord, who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, the man is near kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. And Ruth, the Moabitess, said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with the maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of barley har harvest and of wheat harvest, and dwelt with her mother-in-law. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? And now is not Bo Boaz of our kindred, with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, when he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor, wash thyself therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor, but make not thyself known unto the man, until she, he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be, when he lieth down, that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet, and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me, I will do. And she went down unto the floor, and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. And she came softly, and covered his feet, and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid, and turned himself. And behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread there, therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman, howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. 
tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning that if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of a kinsman to thee. As the Lord liveth, lie down until the morning. And she lay at his feet until the morning, and she rose up before one could know another. And he said, Let it not be known that a woman came unto the floor. Also he said, Bring the veil that thou hast put upon thee, and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley, and laid it on her, and she went into the city. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Who art thou, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, These six measures of barley gave he me. For he said to me, Go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Hold on, I turned too many pages, y'all. We're about to skip over to Samuel, amen. <laughs> then said she, Sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he have finished this thing the thing this day then went boaz up to the gate and sat him down there and behold the kinsman of whom boaz spake came by unto whom he said ho oh, such a one turn aside sit down here and he turned aside and sat down and he took ten men of the elders of the city and said sit ye down here and they sat down and he said unto the kinsman Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know. For there is none to redeem it beside thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar mine own inheritance. Redeem thy my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. For to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor. And this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, Buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. And Boaz said unto the elders and to all the people, Ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Shilion's and Malon's of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth, the Moabitess, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place. Ye are witnesses this day. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that is come into thine house like Rachel and like Leah, which too did build the house of Israel, and do thou worthily in Ephrath, and be famous in Bethlehem. And let thy house be like the house of Pharez, who Tamar bare unto Judah, of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, hath borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the woman, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the generations of Pharez. Pharez begat Hezron, and Hezron begat Ram, and Ram begat Aminadab, and Abinadab begat Nashon, and Nashon begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz, and Boaz begat Obed, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. For Jesus, the root of David. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Well, we've made it to 1 Samuel. Hallelujah. It's been a lot of reading for uh, two days and three gatherings. Amen. So uh, here's what we're going to do for uh, tomorrow because we, we still got some week in us. And next week, you know, we, we can do this as much as we want to. 
and uh, this is the Lord's church, and it's open all the time. Amen? So here's what we'll do. Uh, they do have to do some things uh, in the tent tomorrow, and they need to do uh, early sound checks. They have some sound things that they're, they're rebooting and working on tomorrow at 5, and uh, so that would already throw us off being early. And, of course, tomorrow night, uh, Brother Austin is going to preach. It's going to be good, so it's going to be a great service. We'll have our prayer time and all of that. So here's what I think we'll do uh, tomorrow. We'll still have a good deal of reading, but uh, we won't have, like, a full five or six hours. So here's what we'll do tomorrow, all right? If you give it to this. Uh, church is normally done by like 8.15 or 8.30, so we'll give people a little bit of a chance to uh, boot them out, and I'll read from 9 to 12. That's why people will already be here, okay? That way you have to go and come back. So tomorrow night we'll get like three hours in, right? We'll read, we'll at least get through all of, of 1 Samuel tomorrow night. And so rather than try to do something at noon or at 1 o'clock and then have to stop at, you know, 4.30 and get out and all that and get ready for church, we'll go from 9 to 12, and then I'll let you know uh, what we'll end up doing on Thursday. We'll have more time on Thursday. Uh, Friday I preach in uh, Mississippi. But I'll, I'll try to do something maybe a little bit earlier before I pull out. Because, I listen, I'm just enjoying reading it every day. Amen? So it's good. So, uh, so tomorrow night, everybody online, we'll still have our regular live stream from 7 to 8.30. And then uh, at 9 o'clock, we'll go live again with uh, round four of Bible reading. Amen? Love you guys. Go home. Get some rest.